And we are live. What is going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday, the last Wednesday of 2013, which is absolutely crazy. I can't believe, uh, I still can't believe it, that we're almost in 2024. Um, let's see. Let's start off with seeing who's all here today. We've got, let's see, Sem, Dune, Jasper, Charles, Marcus, GPs, Delmar, uh, Jose, let's see, FBM Junkies, PFs in the house. How's everybody doing? Did I say 20? Did I say 20, 20? Did I say 20? What did I say? Did I say 2015? I'll have to go back. <laughs> That's how I feel. Uh, I haven't had coffee in my defense if I did say 2013. The last last Wednesday of 2023, that's the year we're in. Um, <laughs> it's been it's been a crazy week here. Um, I hope everyone's doing well and I hope everyone that celebrated Christmas had a great Christmas or whatever holiday you celebrate had a great holiday. Um, I... Uh, it was a great Christmas. Aaron's been sick for like four or five days now, and it seemed like it was getting better. And then on Christmas, on Christmas Day, it sort of took a turn. And she's definitely on the mend now, uh, but it's been uh, been a rough couple days, especially for her. But I hope everyone is staying healthy and again had a great Christmas, or great holidays. So today. I feel pretty awake. I, I feel, I took a shower. I feel, I feel good. I just don't know what year it is. <laughs> I just don't know what year it is. Or maybe I was testing you guys. Um, I don't think it's the Rona cause she caught that like, uh, I think she caught that in October and I would be surprised if she got it again. It seems like it's a head cold. She said that some of her coworkers were sick like a week ago and then she just generally doesn't have a great immune system. And so I think she caught it from work. Knock on wood. Um, I haven't been feeling too great, but I certainly haven't had the symptoms she's had and Jack seems to be doing uh, okay as well. So hopefully it stays that way. But yeah, it's been a, it's been a long couple days, um, mostly for her. So, uh, are you secretly a time traveler? I, I couldn't tell you if I was, it breaks the, uh, paradox, time paradox. Um, hey monkey butler. Uh, hey Rahim, and mostly the deck and sides extensions other than that. Yeah, the deck and side extensions take the most time. Also, um, I've been printing all the parts on the K1, uh, K1 Max, and it's been anything but smooth. You'll see by this, um, this Saturday's video, um, I've actually got the printer, hold on, <laughs> right below my feet. <laughs> so we've got ABS, there's skirt parts cranking out right there, um, right, right at my feet. I figured, hey, I'll warm my feet up too. <laughs> and it fits perfectly. So the uh, K1 Max, man, I'll, I'll give like a quick little rant on this and I'll get going because we got a hard cut off because Erin is going back to work today. She's, uh, at least I think so, she's on the tail end of things. So um, I printed a fair bit with the K1 Max. I've had it now for probably three months, but it's primarily been just PLA where I've thrown things at it and been like, cool, it turned out, it turned out fine, it turned out great. Um, I ha and an occasional ABS or ASA part. I haven't really done lots of them. And so I printed, I, I set out to print the first batch of Enderwire parts on it and instantly saw, I don't think I even have the parts anymore because they've since been replaced, but that the bottom, like part of, for the longer parts, part of it was too close to the bed, part of it was too far away from the bed. And it led me down a massive rabbit hole of what's going on, ripping apart the printer, looking at what other people are doing and figuring out what worked for me. And that's what Saturday's video is on. But it took me a long time. The bed is still by no means perfect, but I've, I've made progress. These are all printed on the K1 Max. And um, I got the bed deviation down from like 0.8 or 0.9 of a millimeter down to 0 0.26, 0 0.27. Um, and I have it working much better now. It's still not perfect. Like, um, there's a recent part that I did. Oh, these all look pretty good. It's still not perfect though, but it's a lot better. I'm pretty happy with it. The real solution is that the K1 Max just needs a flatter, better bed. I I looked and there are so many uh, people, I, I don't know why it's not talked about more, but going on the Facebook group, going on YouTube and actually keywording K1 Max bed, it is wild to me just how uh, like warped people's beds are, so. Uh, but yeah, again, it doesn't matter all the time, but when you're printing like a full tray of ABS parts, it, it really does matter. So uh, again, I think that, you know, hopefully, hopefully it's addressed. I don't know. The, Creality has leaked that they're releasing a K1E, I think it's called, and uh, it looks like they have a different bed on it. So I'm hoping that that one might be better than this one. So 
Um, how to use the switchfire from Cyborg. This, I just received this. When did I receive this? Two, two, oh no, not even, was it two weeks ago? Maybe two weeks ago. This is brand new. This should be like, I think the latest, latest. Uh, build switchfire, then print a coffee pot stand. Yeah, you see the Big Tree Tech bamboo screen? I did, yeah. I am curious because, um, so for anyone who doesn't know, Big Tree Tech is releasing, they're releasing a series of products for the bamboo P1, P1S, basically the P1 series, and it's a touchscreen, uh, sort of similar concept to the open source X-Touch, but it's their version of it. It looks a lot more like the default screen on the X1 Carbon. It's got magnets, it looks clean, and it also is, I think it charges itself when it's in place, so you can pop it off and walk around and use it to control your machines. The thing I'm curious about is, with the latest release of, uh, or the latest talk slash release of a jailbreak coming out, is if that's going to have any effect on it, that device's ability to communicate with the printer. Because I believe it's using MQTT, and I know that with the latest version of the firmware that was released, some things have changed. I just, I don't know how that's all going to work, but it looks pretty sweet. It, it definitely looks looks like a nice product. Uh, Maurice, thank you very much for the five gifted memberships. Cheers. Uh, for the last stream of 2013. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead. The game plan for today is let's take a look at this kit. I don't want to take uh, too much time ranting about things without making some progress. Um, so let's take a look at what's included with the kit, and then we will start disassembling the Ender... It's the Ender 3v2 that that is... Um, it's the Ender 3v2 that is going to be torn apart to build this out. So... I'm not sure what the best camera is. I'm thinking, let's zoom in. This looks like a pretty good view for something like this. Uh, a little bit closer, maybe like that. So, no, 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 I, I said 2013 on purpose, on purpose that time. That was the joke that, that I, I, I'm very, <laughs> I'm aware. Uh, I have not, I have not jailbroken the uh, X1 Carbon. No, I have, it should still be on a firmware unless they auto, unless I have it configured to auto update over the air. I don't think I do usually you have to accept it. Um, I still have it on that version, but now I, I'm not going to do it yet. I'm going to wait to see sort of how the whole project evolves and sort of what Bamboo's response is to it, because right now there hasn't really been much of a response. So, okay. Hardware kit. So this is all of the hardware, uh, screws, bolts, and all that stuff that comes with, uh, why did that pop off? Um, that, that for this build, and I will say that I think Cyborg, I, I haven't tested all of the kit providers, but so far Cyborg has been the best when it comes to hardware organization. I, I've i always used my little hardware organizers, and I think that these work great, but not having to print them out and already having them in their little cubbies with pictures on the lid is, is just so, so nice. Uh, is that screw kit separately available? I don't think that it is, but that would be a great idea for Cyborg to do. I know that I, I'm almost positive Fabrico with the Honey Badger brand has done some stuff like this for other printer projects, and um, this definitely could be a good idea for someone, or for them to do in case someone wants to self-source some of the parts but just wants the hardware. Cause Ordering the hardware is kind of annoying onesie twosie off AliExpress or, you know, wherever you end up ordering it. So it'd be neat to have something like this. Uh, Maurice, as far as I know, Bamboo removed the ability to downgrade. Yes, they definitely did. Uh, as far as I've heard from a couple people, the Bamboo Handy app doesn't let you downgrade anymore. So we'll see how long that lasts. Again, I think that right now they're, um, they're probably trying to figure out what they want to do. I imagine because they've been so vocal in the past, I imagine they'll probably put out a statement, I think, but we'll see. Okay, so what else do we got? We've got our USB cables. Um, we've got our, the sensor, which is the Omron, right? Yeah, the Omron inductive, inductive probe, uh, which will be, I'm going to use this for this build and see if it performs better than the one that I had in my other switch wire. I'm not sure long term if we're going to be using this. I think that Big Tree Tech is sending over one of their Eddy sensors, and if they do, we'll probably swap that, swap this for that, especially if it's drop in. But for now, we'll go with. Well, for now, we'll go with this. <laughs> 
Um, what else do we got? We got our extruder motor, which is a, a, a stepper online. So it's a good brand stepper motor. This is what I used for uh, Oso Beacon clone. I guess so. I, the the Eddy one at least isn't like a one-to-one -one copy of it. It's I like that the form factor I've seen is um, looks like it's the form factor of the Omron probes. So yeah, moons or not moons. Stepper online, stepper motor. Uh, for anyone curious, the part number is 14RE08104S-H. Uh, this is what I'm running. I'm running all stepper online motors on the original V0 that I built, and I've had a really good experience with them, so I like stepper online motors. Have you seen LDO has a 6236? Yeah, wasn't that released in combination with NX team for like their new sh uh, Sherpa? I'm pretty sure I saw that. AC inlet. This is the hot end, which... I'm curious to see how this hot end is going to work out. It looks similar to the one that came on the V0.2 that I built, which, which had, uh, which had some issues. But I'm hoping that that's not the case and that they've, they've changed things up. So it's kind of like a, where's the heater block? It's almost like a one-to-one -one of a V6 heater block. So, but it's got the mounting points of a dragon. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Shammy? Yeah, early stream. Aaron, Aaron's got work a little early today, so I figured we'd push it up uh, an hour. It's got a bimetal heat break, and then again, like a V6 heater block. So it's definitely not high flow, but we're gonna start with this, see how it works out, see how it performs. I, I'm i planning on installing, when we build it, an ERC, ERCF, the V2, either on this machine or the actual switch wire that I have. So. Um, if we end up going that route, high flow is not going to be necessary. And if we're using a cutter, I would think high flow is probably worse because it would mean more filament needing to be purged. So we might, if this ends up performing, at least reliably, we'll probably end up sticking with this. Hey, Mr. Joda. Hey, Matthew. Hey, DJ. Hey, what's up, Maple? Dragon Ace Candidate. Maybe. Maybe. I, I, um, I know that... I think it's a zombie that's talked... Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> um, I think it's Zombie that's mentioned a couple of times that he really likes it as a budget uh, budget hot end. So possibly, if this ends up being problematic, then maybe we'll look at that. I also have a container with some hot ends that probably should get um, probably should get used at some point here. Hey Ed, so this nozzle I didn't realize it, but can you see? Oh, oh, no, nope. I, I don't know why I always get this wrong. So it's a, it's like a clone CHT. It's like an AliExpress CHT. I have a bunch of these. I just haven't used them. So we'll, we'll see how that works. That'll probably help flow at least a little bit. Uh, Shammy, thank you very much for the five gifted memberships. Uh, do some air horn action. Hope you had a great Christmas or holiday. Hey, Richard. Yeah, thanks for the support, Shammy. Okay, so nozzle. That'll be fun to finally try out. I ordered a bunch randomly on AliExpress a while back and just never used them. So we'll see how that works out. We've got a tool head board. I wonder if it's the same, same one as what came in the Trident. I don't think it is. It looks different. Ah, it looks similar. So tool head board, oh, tool head board. The good news is though, is that we're not doing five volts. We're gonna be running the stock, at least for now, inductive probe. So I, I won't have to do any funny stuff with the wiring, but it still looks like both of the top connectors are 24 volts. So there's not a dedicated five volts. So if you were running, well, you wouldn't be running tap on a switch wire, I guess. So it doesn't really matter. So yeah, we'll, we'll leave it as this. Uh, no CAN bus. I know that on their, I know that on their pro, um, they're like pro lineup that they're releasing. I think this is the same toilet board that we previously had. Um, I know they're on their pro lineup of kits. They do or are have having CAN bus as an option, but not on this guy. Can I close this without breaking it? Maybe not. Uh, and then we've got all of our wiring harness. We've got an ADXL. <clears throat> uh, TBD for ID scanner. Oh, to be determined on whether it's five volt or 24. Is that what you're saying, Delmar? <clears throat> Uh, Shammy, happy holidays to all you folks, love the community. Hey, thank you, Shammy, for the four months, man. How was your holiday? How was your Christmas? Hey, Printer Prawn. Hey, Burns family. Hi, all, for those who have been asking about, are you kidding, being absent? See Nero Discord general chat. Huh. 
Hope he's okay. Hey, armor. Okay, what else do we got in here? I think this is a butt converter. I think beacon is USB. Oh, that's right. Beacon, beacon's gonna be probably USB. Let's, let's, yeah, that's a good point. It's probably not gonna be connecting to that at all. It's gonna have its own wire. So I'll have to figure that out. Um, yeah, so we got a butt converter for the Raspberry Pi. This does, this kit I believe assumes that you're using either the stock board in your, in your Ender or I think an Ender, like an SKR board. Uh, I'm not actually sure what board is inside the Ender we're taking apart. I think it's an aftermarket Big Tree Tech board. So I'll have to see whether we'll stick with that or whether I'll go with a different board. So we'll see shortly. Um, I don't... Oh, interesting. So this is, this is like their... I know that they use a, it's not a key back because the goal is to keep cost down, but this is like their, it's a, I mean, it's essentially a key back. <laughs> I just think it's not a, a official brand key back, but it works the same way. So this is what's going to keep the, the carriage from slamming into the bed when power is turned off on the printer. Uh, first time viewer live, usually catch them after they finish. Hey, well, I'm glad you made it. Not nah, welcome. Uh, this is the Ender Wire kit from Cyborg. Let me pull up the product page really quick. They did send it over, um, full disclosure, but opinions are very clearly that of my own. Um, let's see, so if I go Cyborg and I go, let's go to their website really quick here. Do, 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 do. So there's two versions of it. Um, the only difference is that one has printed parts if you don't want to print out your parts. I think most will want to print out their parts, but I guess if you have an Ender, you don't have a Voron or a printer that's capable of printing ABS well, you might want to do something like this. Uh, I don't remember, let's see, 3D printer. No, so they don't have, I'm pretty sure there's a product page for it. There we go. So the, if you get it without printed parts, it's three, 359. And I'll show you everything it comes with. The, Main things you're still going to need are obviously an Ender 3, I think it's for Ender, yeah, Ender 3 V2 or Ender 3 uh, Pro. You're going to need the, you're good. it doesn't include, I guess it doesn't include the controller. So you'll need to use your controller and a Raspberry Pi. That's basically it. I think it, so let's see, no question. Is there any specific info on here? There's a lot of, there's a lot of things on here. Okay, here we go, additional requirements. So Raspberry Pi 3B are similar, I, I, uh, soldering iron, hex tool ruler, uh, crimping pliers, an M5, M5 tap? I didn't even realize that. <laughs> uh, so the printer, printed parts, and then a few tools basically. So yeah, it's primarily the electronics. <clears throat> that conversion kit cost 120 euros more than the switch wire from LDO with customs and shipping. The conversion is did, did LDO drop the prices substantially? Cause the, the uh, switch wire kit used to be double of this. So this is 359. And if I go, let's go to like Fabrico, unless they heavily lowered the price then that's not, that's not correct. Cause it was like 700 or $800 switch wire. There's the frame kit. Yeah, that's not the case. The switch is $850. So if you have an Ender, it's an Ender plus, what is that? What did I say? Three, 360? So it's, it's less than half the cost. Yeah, so it's a lot cheaper than an LDO switch wire. I love my LDO switch wire. I have one, but it's definitely, it's definitely a lot more expensive. <laughs> which makes sense i mean with this one it assumes you have a printer already right so uh we've got cable chain oh let's go back overhead uh, uh, okay so we've got cable chains we've got new motors for the uh this is for the xy nope xz 
It's not a Core XY, it's a Core XE. I think you still use the stock Y motor, but they send you two new motors for the XE. We've got a replacement screen. Is this run over interesting? Uh, PF, thank you very much for the five memberships, man. Cheers. <clears throat> we are third, like we're like 33 days away from starting to move into the house, which is going to be so cool. I can't wait. <coughs> the studio is going to be very similar to this, but I'm hoping to have like a second setup so I can work on multiple projects at the same time. I'm definitely looking forward to kind of showing you guys around once I get it all set up. So it comes with a different screen, so it replaces whatever Ender 3 screen you have. There's also an add-on board on the back, which it looks like this basically converts the screen from needing the two standard wires into just being USB connected. So I think it adds, it actually, does it add an STM32 to the board? I haven't seen the conversion kit is uh, 1,700, but can't be shipped to Germany. What conversion kit? Have you looked on AliExpress? Because they have it on AliExpress. It's uh, I don't know if through their website, it's just a lot more expensive. How expensive is self-sourcing an underwire? I have no idea. In general, self-sourcing is going to be more expensive. It's a separate MCU with an STM32. Gotcha. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So you get a new screen. This is also a... Because it assumes you're using the stock Ender board, you also get a clipper, a clipper extender. This is the clipper expansion board. I've seen these before online, but I've never, I've never actually used one. So this is a separate MCU as well that gives you additional connections. I'll have to look ahead. I'll have to look ahead to see what the electronics looks like and see if I need to order some stuff for it. <clears throat> when I bought two, I don't know. When I bought a two point four from Cyber, the customs and shipping was included. I've used those, have two, and they work great for fans and lights. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think that the I want to say that the printer we're tearing apart has an Ender or an what is it a SKR. Easy board in it. I think it's using the easy driver, so it'll be interesting to see. Let me see if I can fit this back in nicely. All right, let me take this out of here. Shove this right here. Since... <clears throat> okay, what else is in here that is exciting? We've got all of our wires, which are already uh, pre crimped, and this is um, FEP. Is FEP wiring? Yeah, so this is this is wire intended to go through the cable chain. Hey, Dustin, thanks for becoming a member. I think you remember you remember a long time ago. <laughs> I haven't seen you in a bit. I hope you had a good holidays. Uh, hey, Ted. Hey, Daniel. Okay, we got VHB. We've got belts. We've got a few other wires. Some zip ties. Move top layer. Oh. Okay, bottom layer. So we've got a cool sheet of stickers, which is neat. <laughs> These are pretty cool. Um, let me show. <laughs> Do not disturb the graphic designer. <laughs> These are, these are fun. I, I like these stickers. I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a sticker fan. So, uh, Troy, thank you for four months. Cheers. I had to update. <clears throat> oh, gotcha. What brand belt? Uh, I'm assuming Gates. I can tell you that in a second. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. They've got Gates, Gates belts. Does this kit come with the panels? I, I, that's a great question. It does. It does come with the panels. So we've got our bed here. So it, you get a new, so it looks like it uses the stock bed heating elements, but you get a new magnet, which is good because the, 
magnets on the enders are not good, <laughs> especially on the older ones. So uh, then you've got a black powder coated Cyborg under three switch wire, uh, dual sided PEI bed. So this is a really nice looking bed. I'll definitely throw a crap, not a crappier bed, but like an older bed on at first <laughs> while I'm getting my Z offset. Uh, I'm missing a sticker with there is no place like G20 out. <laughs> that's there you go. That's a good, uh, that's a good sticker idea. So yeah, we've got that. We've got our bulky feet, our switch wire style feet. We've got our linear rails, which are all Cyborg, Cyborg branded rails. One, two, three. So we are getting rid of our V rollers, which I'm not upset about. So yeah. And all of the rails, I think on the Trident, the rails were different brands. On this one, they are all Cyborg. So all the same, all the same style of rails. <clears throat> yeah, the kit, the kit looks nice. Um, I know that we had, we had been talking about me building one of these for a while. And because they'd been updating the kit based off feedback, I was like, well, let's wait until, let's wait until it's close to me actually building it. So that way I can show off like, what's the latest version of this kit. And then there is a, extrusion i don't know i don't exactly know what this is replacing but we've got an additional extrusion included so dual y that it it actually might be dual y now that i'm thinking about it because why would there be so there'd be two rails for z one rail for x and there's two more rails so maybe it is dual y which would be sick because even the regular switch wire is just a single single Y uh, rail. Okay, this is for the X carriage, gotcha. So different, oh, that makes sense because the X carriage, the X carriage has some drilled out spots on it on the one that's on the stock ender, I believe, for where the V roll, the V wheel brackets sit into. That's cool, dual, dual Y. So yeah, I guess it is dual Y, that's nice. I actually didn't even realize that until you mentioned it. And then down below, we've got the panels that was just asked about a second ago. They are, it says cast acrylic. So panel, panel, all of our panels. And then these are, it says frosted mats. I think, I think it's all acrylic, even the black. I don't think they're ACM. I think it's all acrylic panels. So yeah, you've got everything. Again, the main things you'll need are the controller itself, a Raspberry Pi for running Clipper or, you know, some kind of board for running Clipper. And Again, it says a couple tools. I'm curious because I didn't realize that we were going to be tapping anything. So we'll see if that's, and if that ends up being the case or if that's not true, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. Okay, so now that we've got that, we can start taking apart. Now we can start taking apart the Ender. Hey Kit, uh, greetings critters. Hey, what's up Nexus? Okay, so we are taking apart the handy dandy oh. belted Z Ender that we built on stream maybe a year ago. Um, it's been a good printer. I haven't used it a ton to be perfectly honest. I've used it a bit. I was working on, <clears throat> I was working on a replacement bottom cover for it because this stock one, if you saw my video on the board that's in here, it pushed into the micro SD card slot. So I, I modeled up a replacement that didn't have those tabs and was going through some changes on it. We did also end up installing the Clack Ender, which is the clicky clicky mod for this. So kind of sad to tear it down, but uh, having it as a, having it as an Ender wire is going to be, I'm going to use it a lot more. I, I really like my switch wire. And so uh, I'm excited to get this up and going. So for anyone that didn't see this, let's do a quick little view of it before we tear it down. So it's a neat design. Uh, it's by Kevin, AKA Sam who has done some other cool mods, but this is, there's a couple variants of it. There's one that has two motors, so you can tram, um, tram your X extrusion. I went with the single motor version, just using smooth um, roller wheels. There's also a linear rail version, but it's basically got a motor here. It ties both sides of your Z together, and then there are belts that ride it up and down. And the, the gear reduction, uh, allows it so that way when the power is off your gantry does not crash it, it, it can slowly i guess it can slowly kind of go down depending 
but it, it, it does a good job of holding it in place. Uh, I cracked my SD card with that board the first time. Yeah, it was a really not a great uh, design choice by Victory Tech when it comes to that micro SD card location. So yeah, we did this and then the, did we lose? It looks like we lost, oh no, here we go. So for anyone that hasn't seen this, this is a really cool, I've seen this printer in so many videos. <laughs> yeah, it's I've definitely used it a fair bit. Uh, just at least not lately, I haven't. So <clears throat> this is the clicky, clicky mod for it. So it's the leveling switch and it docks on, there's a magnet on the inside and there's a screw here that it kind of just sits on. So it goes like, it sits there. When the tool head goes over the bed and goes beyond it, the magnets grab it and now we've got a switch on here. So it, it, now I can go around, probe the bed, and then when you want to dock it again, it drops it down. Yeah, this is, <laughs> we're gonna be stripping it down, uh, zombie. I'm just showing it off one last time. And it goes over here and there's this, there's this little mechanism here that basically bumps it off of its holding spot <clears throat> and it goes back on the magnet. So you go, wait, no, is it like, okay, wait, no, here's what it does, I forget. So it, it, you have it go all the way over, and then you drop it down. And then when you move it to the left, it, dis it disconnects it from the tool head and pops it back over here in the corner. So the design is, is, in is super clever. For a bed slinger setup like this, it's awesome. This is, I like this setup a lot better than the servo method I've been running on my switch wire, primarily because it's, since it's on the X axis, you don't have to have a additional ZN stop. You just, every time it homes, it goes over, grabs that thing, goes down, probes in the center, runs it over here. Oop, I knocked it off, but runs it over here, drops it off. Like it, it's just such a clever design. Uh, so on the switch, on the ender wire build, we're gonna start with the inductive probe because I've only had one experience with it and it was bad and I'm curious to see how it goes. I actually don't know. Yeah, we'll probably enclose it. I was just thinking because if I'm gonna be using it for the the ERC app. I don't know if we want to even really enclose it because I'm primarily going to use it for a lot of PLA, but we'll enclose it. So we'll start with the inductive probe. We'll see if the eddy sensor ends up coming in from Big Tree Tech. Uh, we can see about potentially installing that. And because I'm planning on um, updating Clicky on the other switch wire. So yeah, inductive probe is fine if you don't enclose it. That's the thing. We're, we're, we're going to enclose it. So the, in the first experience I had on the original, the LDL switch wire, that, that inductive probe was awful. <laughs> I really had a, had a, had a bad experience. This is, this is the, this tool head is the Micro Swiss NG. So it's not the NG Revo. I have the NG Revo on another Ender in the garage, but this is the uh, original NG. So we'll take it off for now. Hopefully I'll find a home for it in the future. Who is Eddie Sensor? <laughs> Uh, Dustin says you should try Unclicky. I forgot about Unclicky. I haven't, you, you'd mentioned it when you were first working on it. Okay, so we're gonna just start taking stuff apart. We don't have to be crazy gentle. I've got my LTT screwdriver that I got for myself for Black Friday. And we are just going to start taking stuff apart here. Um, Yeah, it is the new Big Tree Tech one. Um, I guess we can just put this. Can I have the NG when all is done? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Let me see. Let me first take it off and see if I've got a home for it. If I don't have a home for it, then possibly. Are you in the US? Grab a trailer box for parts. Yeah. I just grabbed this this morning for this. I mean, the main thing we're keeping is the extrusions. Everything else I'll probably put off to the side for now and then figure out, figure out what I want to do with it. I think the name's current.
we'll, we'll see engineering, because if I'm going to give it away, I might end up doing a giveaway of sorts. That way other people can try to enter it. But it would have to be a US thing. Let me just see first, because again, if I've got a spot for it, I'll install it on a different printer. I just got to get it off first. This is, this is cracked. <laughs> this is really cracked. Or maybe, no, 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 it's two different parts. It looked cracked in the center. I'm hoping for an open source load cell extruder. Yeah, that would be awesome. I'm sort of surprised that we haven't seen load cells being implemented into some of the open source tool heads, considering they've become so much more common, at least in, in um, commercial printers. Is autofocus not? It is on. Super convenient, you're live. I just watched another one of your videos on the Switchwire, nice. Yeah, my, my original Switchwire needs a little bit of a little bit of love. The cable attachment for the Z cracked. Um, cable attachment for the Z cracked. The bed wires need to be replaced because one of them is starting to rub through and I want to swap out the, I want to swap out the clicky probe for it. I took the enclosure off that one. So maybe that will be the, the switch wire that we'll install the RCF V2 onto. Let's see, I take this apart. <clears throat> this is the retro LTT screwdriver. I've been wanting an LTT screwdriver since they launched, but I was like, no, they're, first I was like, they're really expensive. I'm gonna hold out and see if they're any good. And then everyone, like everyone I know that got them said, yeah, I really like it, I really like it. I said, okay, cool, well, I'm gonna hold out. And, um, and then when Black Friday came around, I, use some small drivers. I was hoping for a sale on, on the LTT screwdriver and they had a sale, but it was on the plain color one, like, like single color one. And it was, oops, I dropped a set screw. That's okay. I don't think we'll need it. Hopefully. Let me see if I can find it. It was on the plain one and it wasn't that heavy of a discount. And they also launched the retro color. Yeah, I don't see it. They also launched the retro color at the same time. And so I said, you know what, forget it. I waited, <laughs> I waited a long time. I'm gonna get the retro one, so. Okay, let's pop this off. Let's see, just looking at the frame for this printer, how hard do you think it would be to adapt a similar frame printer like the Anycubic Viper to a Voron? Wait, do you mean to, to a Switchwire? Like a Switchwire style? V2, V2 definitely. We still have the V1 kit that's pretty much unassembled or the V1.1 kit, so I just need to look at the bomb and source the additional components. I have the, I have Binky or Blinky, the encoder. I got, I got two of those in from Shammy a little while ago. So I've at least got that. Why is this so stuck on? There we go. <clears throat> Switch wire style. I don't, I don't know. The, I've seen people convert like Ender and no CR10s into sort of switchwire style printers. So it might not be that difficult, but you'd have to, the things I think you'd primarily have to account for is like longer belts and I mean, primarily longer belts. If you've got longer extreme and longer linear rails, I guess that would be the other thing, depending on how far off it is. Uh, I love those screwdrivers to the point I have two each of the full size and stubby one. <laughs> nice. Yeah, the stubby, the stubby one looks really cool. Okay, so motor is out. I don't think we're reusing this motor, but for now we're just going to just pull this down and I can get back to removing the rest of the screws. I know one guy converted an Ender 3 S1 Pro into a Core XC. Nice. 
Yeah, someone in the in the Modbot Army Discord, back when I was building, I think the Switchwire showed that they had a CR10 that they had converted into a Switchwire, and it looked really good. It was, I mean, a big 300, 300 millimeter by 300 millimeter Switchwire. Also, the aluminum extrusions must have either T or V grooves to install the rails and the printed parts. Okay. So I guess it also depends on the extrusion type that they went with. Okay, so this should be... Is it connected anywhere else that I'm not seeing? No, that should be done. It should be off. So there's two more screws here. And I'll loosen the belts on the Z. We should be able to pull those off. Mind you, that sidewinder... Do a sidewinder at some point, yeah. Has anyone looked at Artillery's new Sidewinder printer? They reached out. I just, I don't have the bandwidth right now. I liked their, I liked their, um, let me take off these set screws. I liked the Sidewinder at the time, but I mean, it's been years since I've made a video on that printer and things have changed. <laughs> Times have changed. The market's changed. What's out there and available for the price is not the same. What did I get for Christmas? Um, well, uh, I got my Christmas present early. <laughs> um, like on Black Friday, I asked Aaron, cause I haven't played video games in a really long time. And I was like, I kind of miss like just having some chill time and sitting on the couch here and there. So I got for Black Friday, a PlayStation 5 for myself. So that was my, my early Christmas gift to myself. <laughs> for actual Christmas, like the current Christmas, uh, my parents got me a Home Depot gift card um, and an In-N-Out gift card. In-N-Out has officially opened in Idaho. We actually went last week for the first time and it was awesome. So, yeah, <laughs> I, was just, I was like, man, because I like PC gaming, uh, but the issue with PC gaming is I don't like, I work on the computer all day long and if I start gaming on the computer, which is the place I work at, it becomes really easy to be like, ah, I'm gonna hop on and just play for an hour when I should be working. So I like to sort of separate, this is a workstation and then I can go to the couch and play console if I wanna just, um, if I wanna just, you know, play some games. So I guess it's kind of a way I just keep myself in check with being, still being able to be productive. Yeah, we got in and out. We got in and out. It's. It just opened like three weeks ago. It's the first one in Idaho. It was the 400th in and out And it's like, um, I think it's like 20 minutes up the road from us. So it was an hour long wait, which honestly was a lot better than I was expecting, considering again, that it's the only in and out in Idaho and it's only been open for a few weeks and the food was fantastic. So um, I, I actually, I do have a Steam Deck, John. I haven't used it. I got it before Jack was, um, Jackson was born and thought I would use it a lot while trying to like put him to sleep and stuff and I just haven't so I do still have it uh, hoping to play it more even just for emulation and stuff but I do agree the stream uh, Steam Deck is awesome yeah fellow Idahoan yep or Idahoan <laughs> we've been out here for a year and a half now what games have I been playing on it honestly I started off playing um I started off with playing Horizon Zero Dawn because I, I had played it a little bit on PC and I hadn't finished it, so I was playing that. And then I picked up, well, the console came with MW3, which I haven't played Call of Duty in quite a few years, but the MW3 is basically a remastered version of the MW2 game that I played with my brother a ton uh, when we were in like middle school. And so I've been playing that a fair bit and that's been a ton of fun as well. Um, and then there's also, yeah, there's another game I think called Rush that I've been playing a little bit, but lately mostly COD, honestly. <laughs> okay, take off some of these big top extrusions now. Uh, Returnal is great. I highly recommend getting it. Returnal. It sounds familiar, but I can't picture... I can't picture Returnal. I'll have to take a look at it. I, I did quite a bit of looking leading up to getting it on like top PlayStation games that I must play. Fortnite is fun. I haven't played Fortnite in years. <laughs> Way too adult. Thank you. 
<laughs> well, it took me a long time. I mean, with the schedule I've got, I, I just can't. I can't. I won't get anything done if I'm gaming too much. So it's having it in the living room where is also where Aaron watches TV and Jack hangs out. Like it means I can only play a little bit here and there. And it's it's perfect that way. But yeah, when I was <laughs> years ago, when I was renting out a room for my best friend's house, like all we did was PC game. Like it was work, get home, PC game for as many hours as possible. I like Five Guys better. I, I like in and out a lot more than Five Guys. I know that it's, um, you just drop parts everywhere. I know that a lot of people swear by Five Guys and I don't think it's a bad burger, um, but when we got them in California, I tried it. I just wasn't wowed by it. Uh, to be fair, in and out has a lot of like memories for me, like uh, from when I was a kid, like a really young child, my parents used to take us there and I just, it's always been like a happy place. So part of it might be the burger and part of it might be the memories of, of going there. So, and, and I just like how consistent in and outs always the exact same as far as, um, as far as flavor goes. So I don't know if I need the X extrusion from here. <clears throat> Let's see, let me go overhead for a second here. Nope, yep. There we go. Five Guys became more expensive than I like. Rather go to Culver's. It's a cast iron burger. You can make a Five Guys burger at home. That's like for my SoCal race. Oh, with in and out John? Yeah, it's just, my parent, like, in and outs always been like super consistent. I like that the menu only has like a few items on it. You don't get that sort of deer in headlights uh, or analysis paralysis when you're going to order. I get pretty much the same thing and um, yeah, I just, I, I, for me, it's, it's been an awesome, awesome place. Definitely a fan. I would think you need the X extrusion. Not sure though. At least it's not Jack in the Box. Yeah, we'll just take, we're just going to strip everything down. So I'll remove every single bolt, um, off of this and put all the extrusions on one side and then the electronics on the other, and then we'll figure it out. Um, need a smaller driver. I was being thrown off my PC so my five-year-old son can play Astroneer while switch. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I'm not there yet, but I, <laughs> I'm sure it won't be, won't be too long, John. Uh, where is the right driver? There we go. I like that it stores them in the back too. It's really nice. How was everybody's holiday? Christmas or whenever you celebrated? Anyone throw a banana, a banana in these burgers? No, I don't, I don't know any, I'm sure there's a place that will do it, but I, I don't personally know of any. Awesome, got a Bamboo Lab P1S, nice. That's an awesome printer. You are going to enjoy it. What's the first, other than like the Benchy that comes with it, which I'm sure you probably printed just to see it whole butt, what's the first thing you printed on it? <clears throat> okay, so I need smaller driver. Or maybe a bigger driver? Okay, so I got a bigger driver. Now I need... I need something, I need a wrench. Uh, you know what, let me grab, <clears throat> let me use these ones that... I swear, I feel like I need, for a lot of these builds, the having, having a second set of hands would be really helpful. go <clears throat> uh good good finish yeah oh nice awesome i'm ordering a bunch of these um i think billy is what they're called from ikea these like slide out drawers kind of like the one i have back here you can't really see it here but um for the new place when we move to organize little parts and i'm gonna go absolutely crazy with good finity bins 
Uh, when I went to Cali, all the time people would ask me all the time to try it. I didn't think it was all that special. Yeah, I think that maybe if you're not from, I don't know, like being born and raised in California, it's like such a ingrained in us. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, everyone's got their own cup of tea when it comes to food. I love getting off track. Honestly, I'm a bit good at getting off track. Hey, Steve's here. Hey, where he is? There he is. Hey, Steve. <clears throat> Everyone say hi, Steve. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Billy Bookcase has been looking at those recently with some glass doors. Maybe it's not Billy the one I'm thinking of because the, the one I'm thinking of is essentially, nope. Uh, there, it's basically this. Like this is this is Target's version of it, but I'm gonna get the official like IKEA version of it. This is a cent, like Target and Walmart and every store has knocked off this exact design from IKEA. But I'm gonna be placing an IKEA order, so to justify the shipping, I'm gonna order a fair bit of things because it is not cheap since there's no IKEA in the state and they have to use like a third-party freight company. Uh, but that's that's what I'm talking about. But maybe Billy has other. Maybe the Billy shelves is another part of the um, the line. <clears throat> Best burger. Yeah, I, burgers are definitely one of those topics where people feel pretty strongly about. <laughs> it's, it's like it's another like best burger place is like uh, feels as controversial as the pineapple on pizza. Uh, great debate. <laughs> The Alex, oh, Alex, okay. Alex drawers, all right, I screwed up then. What do you do about Swedish meatballs? I haven't had any, John, since I've moved out here. I haven't had any, I'm losing my mind. My um, <clears throat> my parents bought a house, uh, they bought a house like 15 minutes from where we're moving, which is basically right up the street from here. Uh, and so they'll be out here starting April or May of, uh, we're in, we said 2023, so 2024. And <clears throat> I'm hoping to convince my mom to show me how to make the Swedish meatballs from scratch that I grew up with. Because when I was real young, we had a lot of Swedish meatballs, but she was often making them completely from scratch. And then as I got older and, you know, she got busier and stuff like that, we sort of transitioned to the frozen ones from Ikea, which are really good. But um, yeah, I'll have to just learn how to make them myself. Hey, nice. Hey, nice. Let me know if the ads are better in today's stream. I found a setting and it was able to change them from balanced to whatever was less than balanced. Uh, so hopefully that helps. I, I don't know if it will, but it's the only thing I saw on my end that I was able to do. Steve, I need one of those M3 tools that you got me, but for for larger, larger nuts. For a first print, first time printer builder, what machine would you recommend? Ooh, that depends on a lot of things. Because I don't want to recommend a printer just because I think it's easier to build if... Because, like, each printer builds in a cost a fair bit, right? Depending on what you go with. Like, they're starting off at a few hundred dollars to up to a thousand, give or take. Uh, you know, depending on the kit and size and all that stuff. So, what is... Part of it is, like, what is your goal to get out of the printer? Is there, like, size requirements? Is, is there... Personally, I I would say go with one that doesn't use 15 15 15s. <laughs> like the V0, I love the V0. I think it's an awesome printer, but I, I don't think starting over, that would have been my first choice starting out. I would have gone with something that's using standard size, like 2020 extrusion, so I can drop, drop in. Okay, so we need smaller. I'm not putting all of these back because because, let's see, is this the right size? Not the right size. Still not the right size. There we go. 
I've considered a V0 or a Switchfire. I want a machine that is fun to build, but also works that constant work to fix. Man, the V0 and Switchfire are very different machines. I love my Switchfire. I understand that everyone is like very much on the Core XY train for the most part, and I, I don't, <clears throat> I don't deny that Core XY printers are awesome and that the kinematics are superior to that of a Bedslinger, be it a Core XY or I'm sorry, a Core XZ or a typical cantilever. Nope, a typical Cartesian. But I really like. If you like the Switchwire printer. It also needs to be enclosed since our room can only have so many fumes until it starts to have an effect. Yeah. I was joking about a B0. It's a fiddly build because of the size. Yeah. Um, hey, Cyborg's here. Yes, China is my first option. <laughs> hey, Cyborg. Yeah, if it were... If it were me, I think that... If we're sticking with the Borons... I like Switchfire a lot, and I think it's the more affordable option of the lineup. Uh, after that, it would be it would be Trident. Like if you decide to go in Core XY, Trident was a good build. It's a really solid machine and tons of upgrade potential as well. If that's something you're ever interested in, double down, do two try. <laughs> yeah, Trident's Trident's a really really nice machine. Hey Nizo. I like my switch wire, but 2.4 just need to get a Trident and V0 as well. Yeah, my switch wire has gotten a lot of print time. Not as much lately, mostly just again because it needs a little bit of love, but it's been a great, it's been a great printer. Okay, I'm not fully going to disassemble this uh, this mess right now because I don't think we're going to be using any of the electronics, in, at least not those motors. So I'm going to kind of kind of just move along and we'll turn our attention to the base. So I'm going to remove, remove the knobs. I think I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, I'm going the wrong way. There we go. Ah, oh, like, yeah, I forget about the legacy. Hey, what's up redacted? I've been watching your videos for a long while and I managed to catch last week's stream. Nice. Hey, I hope you had a great holiday, Christmas or whatever you're celebrating. I'm doing pretty good. I am doing pretty good. It's just the, really the usual. Trying to get caught up with things. Um, I'm going to try sort of one of my New Year's resolutions is to get a little healthier. <laughs> I, a combination of both diet and just moving a bit more. I've gotten... I like I'm... Going from moving in the office to working from home the last couple years has had its perks, but the negative is that like I don't need to move very much and <laughs> as much as that sounds nice um just it started to take a toll on me i want to get get back into exercising a bit more and you know again just eating a little bit better food so that's going to be a big goal of mine we have 230 viewers i haven't even looked at, i haven't looked since we i don't have it pulled up i have the still fabrica's page pulled up yeah if you haven't hit the like button smack the like button we'll do we're opening up a giveaway in 32 minutes here but yeah, everything's going, everything's going pretty good here. Erin's getting over being sick, which I feel bad. She, uh, she said that a few of her coworkers had come down with something and she definitely caught it. She just doesn't have a, doesn't have a great immune system, honestly. I feel like most of the time when there's a cold going around, she always seems to catch it, which sucks. Getting health is my goal. Last year I work IT, so I spent a lot of, yeah, I'm the exact same way. I mean, I have a sit and stand desk and like, I'm sitting 99.9% .9 of the time. And it's like, I I get so caught up in projects that it's it's like um, when it comes time to eat, I'm just like going to the kitchen and finding the quickest thing that I can inhale, which is usually like a frozen burrito or something like that. So my, my parents are both really big into health and fitness. Like, I mean, they exercise. My dad works out still probably almost daily uh, and I eat really healthy. So I'm hoping that once they move out here, in four or five months, I'll sort of get on a bit more of a workout regimen with my pops. So we'll see. That's the goal. It's, I mean, it's easier said than done. That's for certain, but okay. So we are going to be 
We are going to be using this, so we definitely want to hold on to it. We're not using the glass top, so we can um, we can get rid of that. But for right now, I'll just leave it all together nicely. It's going to get replaced. Um, the PCB bed heater will stay, but it's going to get replaced with a new mag sheet or a mag sheet because there's no mag sheet and then powder coated PEI. <clears throat> Uh, I did, thank you, thank you, thank you as well. Hey, thank you, Redacted. Uh, have you seen the Apogee Extruder? I recently installed it on my MD3 and I am almost done setting it up. I don't think I've even heard of it, to be honest with you, uh, engineering. Maybe I have, I, I don't know, I can't I can't picture it. I have two V2s, two Tridents, V0 Rat Rig for DUI machines with a double tree and the most solid, without a double, wait, wait, wait. Without a double trident is the most solid general. Okay, gotcha. So you're saying the trident goes from it. Hello from Mexico. Love your videos. Hope you have a great holiday. Thank you so much, Victor. Same to you. Cheers. Okay, so this I think is just popping off. There we go. Screen is off. We're not reusing the screen, so we'll for now put it off to the side, which is good because these screens don't work with Clipper anyway, since they have their own firmware that runs on them. So put you off to the side. Um, I think I think at this point we should be flipping this on its side. Nope, let's first, <laughs> okay, let's first start by removing a couple of screws here. Steve, <laughs> the 10 memberships, man. Thank you very much, cheers. Thank you very much, Steve. Can we get, can we get a thank you, Steve, in the chat? Awesome, thanks, man. Hello from Mexico too, it's so cool. Are you doing CAN bus? Not initially because that's not um, that's not a part of the kit. It comes with its own um, tool headboard and its own wiring harness. So we're gonna build it like that. Steve, Steve is awesome. I do second that. Uh, potentially, when we rebuild the switch wire, we might go CAN bus. I had requested at Big Tree Tech. They reached out, so I requested one of their ERCF CAN bus boards. And so. If the ERCF is going onto that switch wire and we get that board in, it would probably make sense for us to go CAN bus. So we have CAN bus to tool head and CAN bus to the ERCF board. So we, we might end up doing it for that. Okay, let's, let's. Uh, did you give away? Oh shoot, no I didn't. Thank you, Steve. Uh, yeah, YouTube, YouTube does this thing now where you can give away memberships. Let me see one second. How do I do it? How do I do it? Uh, nope, not there. Um, memberships, uh, membership gifting. I have, okay, so I did do five, sick, here we go. All right, five more people got memberships. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me, I, I'm so, I think it just launched this month, right? So I'm definitely not used to it yet. Yeah, it's a pretty cool thing that YouTube did, so. <laughs> the train. I'll need someone to probably remind me. I think I'll do it um, every other stream. I'll give away five memberships then. So that way there's, because there's 10 per month and you give them away in batches of five. You shove my head in your way. Okay, that's off. Do all printers, do all printers have like a break-in period? My Bamboo Lab P1S smells bad when I print on it. So I was wondering if that wears off eventually. Ah, <laughs> I don't know if they have a breaking period. It's pretty, it's pretty often uh, like a lot of hot ends will have some sort of a coating inside of them that the first time you run it or first couple of times, maybe when it heats up, it might smell a little bit. Need to update the icons. I know I've been thinking about it nice. I'm probably going to do like for 24 months, like a squirrel squad, uh, <laughs> a squirrel squad icon of sorts. <laughs> Hey, thank you for the gift of membership. I'm in Puerto Rico and missed my 3D printer. Are you, you're vacationing then, Nessie? <clears throat> Absolutely. Absolutely, Burns. Yeah, it's probably just a break-in thing uh, with the hot and then. I know sometimes there's also like factory uh, I get factory grease or oil that's added onto it, but usually, do you say smell? Smell? Wait, my bamboo smells bad. Ah, uh, other than the hot and initial heating up, I don't know if that's usually. I would, if it continues, I would, I would contact them. <laughs> um, <laughs> soaking sun. Oh, dude, and soak up some rays for me, please. I, I need some damn sun. <laughs> 
Uh, I've had a ton of issues with a Mellow 3D Canvas setup on the Trident, got it working once, now it won't give me the UUID for it. You, you know, I discovered that once you've got the UUID in your config file, it won't give you the UUID again, just so you know that. Once it's paired, you won't be able to get it again unless you, I don't know if it'll give it if you remove it from the config or once it's done that sort of handshake, you just won't get it again. Uh, if Polar Ted is still in chat, he would, he would be able to give some info on that because when I was running into issues with that, I pinged him and he let me know that. And I was like, ah, oh, that makes a lot of sense. My family no longer wants to enter my room when it's printing, so I have to have a window crack. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't sound right. Are you printing ABS or ASA? Because if that's the case, then that could be um, that could be the cause of it. Uh, let's start by taking off the bottom. Okay, so we're taking off now the Z. Let me go this side. Let's go side view, so you're not just looking at my head. <clears throat> yeah, it doesn't sound right. I've certainly not noticed any weird smells with the uh, printers more than normal. Just PLA. Yeah, that's that's weird. Yeah, once Klimper gets its hooks into the UUID, it's hidden. Yeah, even if you even if you were to hide the UUID from the printer.cfg like commented out Ted, it's still not going to show it, right? Like it's it's basically sort of handshaked in behind the scenes, not even in the printer.cfg file. I heard something about ASA poisoning is that even a real thing? I would say that if you're breathing in heavy amounts of styrene, it is not a positive thing. I know that when I had a printer on my desk for a little while and I was printing a fair bit of ABS throughout the days, I was getting a headache from them. Um, so I, I don't know if it's truly called poisoning, but people can definitely have sensitivities to some of the materials, um, especially some that have more pronounced smells like the ABS or ASA, which are both in the styrene family. He does, he does need to add sudo to the start of the flash command. It would after a reboot. Okay, so it would show back up. I want to do this, but looking to self-source, I did not see... I did not... Wait, wait, wait. Where they have bombs. Does anyone know of a conversion kit that's good to do with where the bomb and STLs are out there? There's a conversion... There's going to be a bomb for this. I'm almost positive. Maybe not on Cyborg's website, because Cyborg sells a kit for this. Uh, but if you go to Dark Dog, who's the creator of this this project, um, this ender conversion, there's gonna be, there's gonna be a bomb. I can just about guarantee it. Okay, we got you off. Let's also, I feel like today's primarily gonna be disassembly stream and next week we'll actually start assembling things. Which is okay, because it'll let me continue printing out parts. <clears throat> yeah, let's see if we can get to 150 likes. The AliExpress page for this kit links to Cyborg's Bomb. I'm printing the parts for this kit now. I think that if you, if you, wait, wait, you said the AliExpress page links to this, oh, to Cyborg's Bomb, cool, okay. Yeah, if, it, if you've got Cyborg's Bomb, then there you go. Oh. It's currently a very expensive paperweight. That sucks. Loyal, uh, Loyal Moses has a video about ASA poisoning. Yeah, I haven't watched, I haven't watched the video to be perfectly honest with you. I've never heard of anyone getting like truly poisoning. Maybe, I mean, again, I've gotten headaches from it, from printing it long-term, but I don't know that they consider that poisoning. <clears throat> hey, nice. Thank you for the five memberships, man. Cheers. How was your Christmas? Did you get at least a little bit of downtime? Uh, Dustin says, what is the plan for Rocky Mountain Red Rep Fest? I don't know. When I talked to Fabrico like three, I think like three months ago, he had mentioned that he was up for sponsoring my trip out there uh, and we were gonna talk after the new year. So if that's still the case, then hopefully I'll, I'll be there. I, I just need to work out details with him. I would, I would like to, I would very much so like to go. Mm -mm. 
Yeah, everyone, everyone's going to have their own sensitivities to the materials too. I remember when I was working at Matter Hackers, there was a guy, there was a guy that called in that had like insane reactions to PLA. I don't remember, I don't, oh, that's scratch that up, it kind of sucks. I don't remember all the specifics, but he was very much so like getting sick from PL, PLA printing. But I think it was more of a him thing, like an allergy, I don't know if he had an allergy to something that was in one, like in the PLA, I don't really know. So. Everyone's got to kind of do what's right for them. And if you're having, if you're having sensitivity, if you're, if it's bugging someone, if you're not feeling good, then certainly you got to do something about it. And I mean, I don't think anyone will argue that if possible, if you can vent your printers, that, that that's a bad thing. It's not, it's, it, most people just don't have the ability to, but if I could, I would just, why not have your printers set up to vent? Anyone know if the tap changer is fleshed out enough to make? I would ask Zombie Hedgehog about that. Everything has toxicity, it's just the dose that varies. Yeah, that's, I mean, driving around in your car, you sitting in traffic, you've got fumes from vehicles, cooking over a gas stove, you've got, I mean, there's, so yeah, I, I've heard that for most, in most scenarios, the actual contents coming off when printing is not bad. It's in such low quantities that there's a lot of things you do normally day to day that's actually much worse. However, I have, I'm not a scientist. I have not tested that. I won't say that definitively. And I think that everyone, when it comes to a matter of health and safety, has got to do their own research, their own due diligence, and do what's right for them and their family and their environment. So... <clears throat> Does the kit include NEMA 17? Yeah, so this comes with an extruder motor. It comes with a new uh, a new XZ motor and you use the stock Y motor. Have you seen the underwater Prusa? Yeah, uh, I got downtime, but I just spent three days. Oh no, I'm sorry to hear that, dude. There's been a lot of stuff going around. Okay, so let's take off. Take off the front next. Tap Changer is trying another type of setup, so it's now Stealth Chop. Okay, I saw it. I know that uh, I get I get emails on Twitch every time Zombie goes live. I know that last night he had a, uh, in his title, it said like Tap Changer, now Stealth Chop or something like that. So that, that's probably what he's talking about. Wonder if I could use the Bontac Direct Extruder. Well, so the, the tool head that this is intended to be used with is a stealth burner. So if the stealth burner has a, if, if a stealth burner has a add-on for the specific Bontech tool head, like I know some people run stealth burners with LGX lights, then you can absolutely do that and it will work fine with this kit. Okay, let's unplug the fan. I don't know if we'll need the fan, but we're gonna keep it. Uh, let's slide. There are so many parts. <laughs> I, I guess because the Ender normally comes um, mostly assembled. I don't know that I've ever taken it down to so many pieces. Um, let's put the bed over here for right now. Let's pull this out. I'll throw you over there. There are so many parts. <laughs> Yeah, normally when you get it, because it's, I mean, even the Ender 3, where it's not just top and bottom and you have to sort of put some stuff together, it's still mostly together. So I'm looking at it right now, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's, I, <laughs> I think Jose had mentioned that I should have grabbed a, another box to put stuff in and I'm thinking that he was right. Okay, let's cut off, cut off all this stuff. Let's just unplug. Okay, so yeah, this is definitely the um, Big Tree Tech board that has the CB1 I'm swapping it out though. This CB1 is one of the older ones and the Wi-Fi is not great. I ordered a couple compute module fours from uh, Pie Shop and those came in. So we'll go with that. So we'll have better Wi-Fi, just a more powerful chip. And the only thing that's gonna be interesting is that we're going to have to pretty heavily tweak the config to work with this board because it's, I think the config they provide is for the stock board or the SKR, uh, E3, the E3, it's been a while. I, I can't remember the boards from Big Tree Tech, those ones, but the SKR board and um, CB2 is coming out though, which is, looks like it's gonna be pretty awesome. It's crazy, it's only nine or three, so many parts. Yeah, there is a lot of pieces. Okay, so let's just start by unplugging everything.
You know what? Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's right. Okay, I, I accidentally pulled that pin out, so we'll have to redo that, that's okay. SKR E3 V3, okay. That's right. <laughs> It's, it's been a, it's been a minute. I'm like I know that there was quite a few different variants because originally it was like the 1.2, so it's the V3 now. Yeah, so I think they've got a config for that board, but I don't know that there's a config for this one. I might be able to find someone else that's already created a config for for this board, so we'll see. The good thing is is that this board has the same hole mounting as the stock ender board. So I'm hoping that space-wise this will work fine with the with the standoffs and stuff provided with the cyborg kit. If not, we'll have to figure out something else, but hopefully it'll all work out. I don't think I can get these wires out without removing the board because of how tight everything is. So let's, let's do that. Let's remove. <clears throat> what is this board? This board is the Big Tree Tech Manta E3 EZ V1.0. So it's shaped it's shaped for the extender that this printer came with. So we'll see. Um, I'm gonna look at, I'm still not entirely sure that we're gonna use this. I think that's the plan initially, but if it ends up being really complicated and doesn't fit in the footprint, then we'll see about it. But um, so yeah, you've got the part for the CB1 or the compute module four, you've got all of your GPIO pins. You've got these drivers, which I believe that the ones on here are 2209s, but they stand tall. They're supposed to have better cooling than the uh, excuse me, Palulu step stick style. And they also take up less space, which is kind of needed in a Ender 3 style compartment. The only issue I really have with this board and the complaint I have is this right here. The micro SD card slot sticks out so far and I've used plenty of Big Tree Tech boards. Normally it goes completely underneath and I'm sure it's because space wise, they just didn't have space. I'm, I'm sure there was a reason for it, but the initial one that I got when I went to install the screw, it pushed down on this and popped the micro SD card slot off the board. And it's just, I, I don't like that aspect of it. So hopefully with this ender wire, there's gonna be a lot more space underneath it for electronics, like on the full size switch wire. So it won't be an issue. But honestly, for now, I'm going to pull this out because I know myself <laughs> and how clumsy I can be. And I, I don't wanna damage it before we get to it. So yeah, you've got two, there should be two micro SD card slots. Yeah, you got one up top uh, one's for the MCU and one is for the Clipper host. So why not use a micro SD to SD card adapter with a flat cable? But that would still, I would think that would still not make a huge difference, right? Because if you press down on the adapter, it would also break the port. This is itchy today. Yeah, the SD card is scary. It's a legacy from the printer it was intended for having the board so deep in the chassis. It's a legacy from the printer it was intended for. What printer was it intended for? It's called the E3. It's almost ready to print with this board. Yeah. Hey babe, Aaron says happy stream day everyone. Can we get a hope you feel better or feel better Aaron in chat? That'd be nice. She's been feeling like crap for a few days. <clears throat> okay, so let's continue tearing things apart. Let's remove, let's get the PSU out. I don't understand Phil's, yeah. I'm not sure, yeah, it's called, the, It's this is the printer it's intended for, Ender 3. Yeah, she, it started off as a head cold for her and then it, it like spread to one of her ears and so it threw off her balance. I think it turned in, into like an ear infection or something. I know my mom used to get, uh, I was telling her that my mom used to get, um, oh God, what's it called? <laughs> There's a name for it where like when your ear is off, like I think for my mom, there was actually like a little like 
rock or something that had gotten in their ear and it was like throwing out um oh someone's gonna know vertigo that's it aaron oh aaron knows <laughs> yeah vertigo is what it's called yeah it was gnarly i i know that it took a while to figure out what it was and then they had to sort of like flush out her ear Also, is it time? No, eight more minutes and then we'll do, we'll open up the giveaway. It was a comment from Mitri Tech Rep on their Facebook while back. We took it as it wasn't originally for Ender and they tweaked it. Oh, interesting. I feel like that's a, that's a, <laughs> I feel like that's a poor excuse. I, I'm a big fan of Mitri Tech. I, I am. I like their boards a lot. I think that they offer a lot of value for the price, but I also am not like i'm happy to tell someone when hey i don't think that's the right move or a good call and calling something an a3 board but having it where without modifying the electronic mount you're going to destroy the board is just absolute poor poor everything <laughs> so i was told that they were gonna i think make some changes to it i don't think it ever ended up happening i don't think i ever heard back from the person back then but yeah, they did a lot of great things. I that was an absolute oversight. Uh, where is the wires that? Okay, okay. So I'm gonna unplug you. I'm gonna. I can't really unplug this guy. Okay, let's open up the top of this. <clears throat> Oops. Go on my foot. Uh, I've struggled. Uh, I've struggled with that before. The doctors say that basically it's a calcium buildup and piece chips off and it rattles around can cause some interesting. Uh, you're talking about vertigo, uh, Dustin? Quick, quick marketing, bad engineering. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, again, I, I like not a discharge Bitchy Tech. I very much so like their products and I've used them not exclusively, but I have very much used them in a lot of printers and they've been great. But yeah, this is one thing where I'm like, I, I was shocked when it happened to me. I'm like, there's just no way I must've done something wrong. And I looked into it. I'm like, there was no mention of, of having to print out any bottom or anything. It was just, it was odd. I mean, the most recent thing with their, um, with their NAMI, they, yeah, there was issues, but their, the person in charge of it made things right really quickly and corrected it. So, they, they have addressed typically things I feel. Um, so anyways, I'm gonna need an allergy pill for this. You started by looking through the kit. Oh yeah, have you had a chance to look through the cyber kit? Yeah, the, the first thing we did was look through the kit. Um, it looked it looked really good. I didn't I don't think I had anything that was uh, like initial concern or standout complaint. The hot end will be interesting to see how it holds up because it appears to be the same style of hot end that was on the. Um, it appears to be the same style of hot end that was on the V0.2 kit, which did not last or perform well, but maybe they've made changes internally to it. Externally, it looks the same, but I, I don't know. First time it happened, I was playing pool blue. Oh, wow. I don't know. I don't know what that's like. I, it sounds, I mean, the way my mom used to get it and describe it to me, it sounds scary. <laughs> it definitely doesn't sound fun. Um, but yeah, I've never experienced, I don't think I've ever experienced vertigo. There are so many damn, <laughs> there are so many screws. Vertigo is basically, ah, gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. So there's a handful of things that can cause it. Yeah, Cause I looked online, it said that just having an ear infection uh, could cause it. You have once. Wait, I had vertigo and you took me to the hospital? How do I not remember that? I don't remember that.
What other printers do you plan on building at this point? You have completed all Voron, maybe Micron, Pandora's Box, or Tri-Rat Rig or Annex. Yeah, so the planes currently, the planes currently for the next months here are, and I don't know in what order, but it's a ERC FV2. It's a Annex K3, right? The smaller one, I think it's the K3. I mix them up. Um, it's Pandora's Box. And then there's some question marks in between all that. Um, we'll also do some stuff that won't be full printer builds. Like I'd like to get this, this switch wire, um, a little, some stuff done to that, which won't be a full printer build. It'll be more of a, you know, tearing down and upgrading some parts. <clears throat> uh, first time I got it was 30 up on a lot. Oh my God. Oh, that's terrifying. Uh, what are the, uh, I'm definitely interested in this kit. I think I want to build a B0 first, but after that I'm thinking, uh, this will be the plan. Well, I'll definitely have more feedback for you in the coming weeks here based off how it all goes. But I, I from being that it's supposed to be a switch wire, if it is even close to a switch wire, I've really enjoyed it. So um, from that perspective, I, I can recommend it. But as far as like the kit specifics, we'll see. I, I don't know how this build's gonna go. One thing that I wanted to show off though is the... I'm gonna cut this really quick. Not cut my hand. One thing I wanted to show off was the build instructions. So they basically took, this is the switch wire we were looking at. So they sort of took the Voron switch wire build guide and then heavily modified it to be for this particular build. And I gotta say that I am a huge fan of that. Uh, one of my complaints in the 2.4 video was that having to jump back and forth between the official Voron guide and LDO's documentation was difficult. I'm, I'm sure part of it was that it's me and I was streaming, but it just having to look at multiple places is not fun. And so this is, you know, specific for this particular build that we're going to be doing, but they've also kind of incorporated a lot of these switch wires specific stuff into it. So like, this is the only guide I plan on referencing for this other than there's a couple of printed parts that I was recommended by Raheem to swap out from the initial kit, just printed parts that make the install a little bit easier. So I'm probably gonna reference those, you know, like printables pages, but I, I'm from gl first glance, I'm super impressed with this. Like documentation is, is one of the more difficult aspects of any printer project or any project. And this is, this is next level. I mean, it's, it's so yeah. Very, very impressed with documentation. Whoever, I mean, we'll see, you know, if there's gaps when I build it, but from first glance, hats off to whoever did the documentation for this. I think it's, it is above and beyond uh, really what I've seen, so. <clears throat> yeah, really good looking directions. Is that your modded Ender 3 with Kevin's mod? Yeah, it is. I like Kevin's mod. I think it's rad. I just, I, I didn't fully do the mod, like I just did the belted Z with the with the um, clack ender and having linear rails and I, I just, I'm gonna use this a lot more. <laughs> okay, I don't think we're gonna be using the AC inlet. I still don't plan on getting rid of it. I can use it for another project probably. So for now, I'll just put it off to the side. But if I recall in the kit, I saw that there was, there was an AC inlet provided. So I'm just gonna set this maybe over here for now. And what else do we need to remove from the bottom? I don't know. I guess we should just, we should just take everything out, man. Let's start with a completely clean slate. Also, what time is it? It's giveaway time, or at least start time to open the giveaway. Send link, short link, copy link. How many people do we have here right now? 247 and 128 likes hit the, if you have not smacked the like button hit the like button let's see if we can get to like 170 before the giveaway okay so form is pinned in chat or it's not pinned yet i'm gonna pin it in a second let's see pin message there we go and then in 30 minutes we'll do the drawing for this or a spill polymaker filament does the psu come with a punch protector i don't know that it does i can definitely give them some feedback that looks nothing like a Voron manual. 
I feel like it resembles the style of it, Dustin. To me, it does. As far as the layout goes, layout, color, and imagery to me looks a lot like the Voron manual. I mean, yeah, the graphics they chose different or stuff, but to say that this wasn't heavily at least inspired by, by it, I think would be not true. Like it definitely was their, was their baseline as far as what they looked at. So far, no ads on your side. Awesome. Okay. That's good to hear. Ooh, 151 likes. We're getting there. Okay. Let's take apart. Nope, that's not right. I was, oh. <laughs> All right. That makes me feel better. I was like, dude, how can you say this doesn't look like the Voron? Like, it, to me, I'm like, this looks the closest thing I've ever seen. All right. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't, I text, I, I there was no tone in, in your text. <laughs> hey, RS. Welcome, welcome. Not sure if you've been told, but you really need to check the wiring harness. I heard a couple people having issues with their printer shutting on fire because the wiring harness is wired wrong. I, we're, you gotta send me info on that, man. I, I haven't heard anything about that. You're saying specifically with this kit? You can't, you can't just throw around the F word, <laughs> the fire word without having, I gotta see, I gotta see what you're talking about. Since I built the B02 and had a few hitches due to lacking manuals. A couple of folks in the Ender Conversion channel on the Voron Discord. On the side for the cyborg kit or just people in general? Come to the Ender Conversion thread in the Switchfire channel in the Voron Discord. Okay, I will I will absolutely look at it then. If you can do me a favor, can you just tag me or like ping me in that channel so I can find it? There's so many damn there's so many damn channels. So what, what is the, I mean, I'll look more, but what is the main issue? You're saying that it's just wired wrong. So you've got pens going in correctly to things. I feel like that would be like, things wouldn't work then if they were wired incorrectly. Or are you saying that there's like, things aren't rated correctly? I don't know. I'll, I'll look into it. I'll look into it. I appreciate the heads up. I definitely, something that I want to know if I should be looking, um, <clears throat> Just made his Elegoo yellow PLA not stick to the build hack. Had issues with it, cleaned the bed and applied glue, didn't stick, and I sought to apply Terra. Incorrect pinout kept the heater on constantly. Interesting. Could be grounding issues as well on the static. Shock on common lines. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, color scheme. No, we, we voted on color scheme. So the primary color is teal. Uh, these are the, this is Galaxy, Polymaker Galaxy ASA teal. And then the accent pieces are going to be in there. This is Galaxy Purple ABS or yeah, Galaxy Purple ABS. So teal primary, purple accent. It was very close. It was almost uh, purple primary teal accent, but teal one is accent by like a couple percent. So it'll be the first time that I've done like not black as a primary. So I'm excited, excited to add a little, a little color, a little, a little flair to the build. Is this second person to ask about ASA poisoning? No, I don't know. I don't really know anyone that 
has got ASA poisoning. Someone mentioned earlier that Loyal said that he had it, but I, I, I don't know. I, I've never heard of anyone. I mean, again, people getting headaches or something like that. I've heard of that. I've gotten a headache from it before, but I don't know that I've heard of anyone truly getting ASA poisoning. <clears throat> uh, pr pr Praetorian Guard? I don't know what that is, not. I had I Iakin? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I know he had a video about it. I gotta look into it more. Maybe I'll watch it. <laughs> Maybe I'll watch it because so many people are asking about it. But no, I, I've never had an issue with it. I've printed a ton of ABS and ASA. I mentioned there was one time where I printed a ton of it, like almost right under my nose, which is kind of funny because I'm printing a ABS like at my ankles right now uh, on the K1. It's underneath this printer. But there was one day where I was printing a ton of ABS right on my desk and I did get a headache. I, I definitely got a headache and I can guarantee it was from that. But that's been the extent of it. And so I just try now to, well, open a window or keep my window, or keep my door open or leave the room every once in a while. So. Star Wars. Okay. I, I'm sorry, Lisa. I, I I don't I know Star Wars, but I don't know Star Wars that well. Yeah, he's the only person I've ever heard talk about it, DJ. I mentioned earlier though, like everyone's got their own levels of sensitivity, so you know it's entirely possible that someone has no reaction to something and someone else has an awful reaction. So and it does there it, it's a pretty I mean a ABS or ASA has a pretty strong smell so for someone that's sensitive to to odors I, I can see it being unpleasant which could potentially lead to something else but yeah i i don't know uh was that a metric ton <laughs> it may look like sully i like so i like monsters inc um all right we are getting down to it each film is a different blend yeah they also have like the core resin pellets that make up the the material is different from manufacturer to manufacturer i mean i think there's a handful of like big ones out there that, that most use but they can very much so vary so it's on a case-by-case -case basis i know someone that got a pretty bad rap uh was that rash for printing abs in his office was open with an open printer yeah i could see that I mean, it's not pleasant. I don't enjoy, uh, I forgot we have to be present to No, no, uh, Cobra, if you got stuff to do, you do not have to be present. Yeah, because the streams are sort of, you know, midday or weird times, I, I don't, I, I know some people watch on there, like Steve pops in on lunch breaks usually. So I, I don't expect you to have to be here to claim it. That's usually, I usually only do that for the big giveaways when we have events or something like that. Why are you not, there we go. All right, I'm off to be productive. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks for the heads up again. I'll take a look, and if that's the case, then once we get towards wiring, I'll I'll have a I'll have a real real deep look into it and monitor things as well. If that's the case, I'll also probably reach out to Cyborg directly to see if they've got any info on it. But yeah, it's the first time I've heard heard of it. Uh, look at the ends of the 4040 aluminum. Look at the ends of the 4040 aluminum tube where two new M5 threads must be cut under the end caps. Okay. As long as you double check the wiring, it should be good, but don't just blindly trust it. Yeah, no, I absolutely appreciate that. It's also something that I want to make sure I know because if I need to tell people that, I want to know that info. Like, I, I can't say that I always do the right thing or the best thing, but I at least want to warn people about things to check when it comes to safety, so. Is there a pre-cut extension to make Ender 3 more stable? Is there a pre-cut extrusion to make my Ender 3 more stable? You, wait, what's not stable about it? Do you mean because it's only supported by one lead screw? If that's the case, then the mod I just took off of this or adding a second lead screw will give you um, 
added stability. The risk assessment at the school I contract to mainly was to turn over the air in the room. The printers are running in two times per hour. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ABS is what most... Wait, wait. I'm currently building an M3 V3 Cyborg switch wire. The wiring kit is not great at all. Interesting. What is not good? Did I change the playlist? I don't... So, let me look at the music. So, I got a copyright infringement on last week's stream, which is odd to me because I... I, um got it from the same place which is like stream elements royalty free and i put on it was like christmasy i don't know if you, whoever was here last week would have heard it and right after the stream i got like two dings for and it doesn't affect the channel it just basically says like we can't run ads on this video but it was weird to me because i've always used it so i, I did delete a bunch of i did delete a bunch of tracks Okay, we should be we should be on 8-bit. Yeah, that was weird. Y-axis. Have to drive home, hope to finish the stream in a few. Sounds good, not. Um, how big a bottle of blue Loctite did you get for this? I didn't get any Loctite for this. I will probably just use the same stuff I've been using. If I can find it. We've got, ah, here we go. Yeah, I've just been using purple, I think. Or pink. It's uh, two, uh, 222 is the number on it. That's what I've been using in the last few builds and that's what I'm gonna stick with. It's been working out good. Yeah, crazy stupid Mario time. Y axis, my bad, it's currently a 2040, which makes the bed quite, ah, got you. So it's a 2040 on its side. So you only have 2020 to bite onto. I don't know. I don't know of any mods for that to be perfectly honest with you. I know they corrected it. Well, then it, they changed it, right? So like on this printer, it's a it's a 4040 now. No, is it a 2040 still as well? I think it's a, no, I think it's a, it's a, um, I think it's a 4040 now. So it rides on two wheels. I don't know if positive is, it is. But I don't know about converting one that's like that. I don't, I don't, there's probably a mod that would let you switch it over from V-rollers to like linear rails, which would definitely make it more rigid. But because of it, the way it is with the extrusions, other than doing some serious modification where you're taking off an extrusion and cutting it to make it where you can fit like a 4040, I don't know how you would do that. Ender 3 Pro is 4040, gotcha. Some Ender versions use a 4040, yeah. Sponsoring Lightburn. <laughs> Their shirts are really comfortable. For anyone that doesn't know, I work for Lightburn. They're, they're my nine to five. We're off this week, even though I'm gonna be doing some mod. There's a mod to do that dual Y. So there is some mods, yeah. Chitty Tech has odorless ABS, interesting. I wonder how, I wonder how that affects the mechanical or thermal properties. I feel like it's gotta have some effect on it. Okay, let's, let's take a look at everything we've got here. <clears throat> So I'm gonna try to clean up a bit. Things that we definitely don't need, I'm going to place over here off the side where they're completely out of the way. So we got that. We definitely need power supply. I don't know about the fan. We'll hold on to it though. So let me unscrew. <clears throat> okay, fan we're keeping. <clears throat> I'm so surprised all the mods that Ender 3 has from filament machine, foldable. Yeah, it's just, I mean, you've got, you've got raw, you know, extrusions, you've got motors, you've got a control board, you've got a screen, like there, there's just so many things you can do with it. It's, it's pretty awesome. I love that the Ender 3, you got belted Ender 3s, like it's a very, for the price point that you can get an Ender 3 at, which I mean, I think the, in the US Micro Swiss, not Micro Swiss, Micro Center might still have the crazy promos going on where you can get where you can get a what is it like an ender 3 pro or v2 for 150 dollars or something like that i mean it's wild odorless wouldn't necessarily mean the bass is uh, the bass the gas is less bad though like in oil painting a bunch of odorless solvents are almost as bad as smelly ones i 
uh, though those are much harsher chemicals. Yeah, don't they often say, well, I guess I think it's the things you can't, maybe it's visual, you can't see your worst for you, but yeah, just because something doesn't smell, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, can say that like it's fixed everything. It just, I think that, isn't that mostly what carbon does? The carbon, when you put carbon filter into a printer, I don't think it actually does much for the VOCs. You need like a full blown HEPA for that. The carbon is what breaks down like the actual odor for it, I believe. Ender 3v2 is $100. Yeah, that's incredible. $100. Wow. Yeah, so you get, I mean, that's, that's crazy. Uh, I would expect ABS being styrene based is always going to be bad. Yeah, I think that's the case. Come on. Other way around, HEPA does nothing for VOCs, carbon does. Oh, okay, I got it mixed up. Interesting, I for some reason thought that HEPA does nothing for VOCs. For some reason I thought that HEPA was able to get the micro particulates that HEPA for part Part, okay, gotcha. You're right. HEPA filter for... Wait. HEPA filter for VOC. <laughs> We've got conflicting... conflicting things now. Need both. Yeah. I think the BOFA ecosystem, which is super expensive, theirs have multi-stage filters, and that has both like a pre-filter, carbon, and HEPA. Where's Alien when we need him? <laughs> okay, so I think we, I don't know if we need the knobs. We're getting closer. We're getting closer to having everything out. We don't need this. We don't need this belt. Get you off to the side. We don't need you. I don't think we're gonna need any of the actual hardware stuff. Like any of the screws and that. I would imagine all that's included. So it's, Extrusions, printed all of these injection molded parts, all the V wheels. Could have grabbed a tub. Jose was right. Uh, Google says, do HEPA filters remove VOCs? Wait, wait. Uh, Google says, do HEPA filters remove VOCs from there? If you're looking to remove VOCs from your home, HEPA filters will not be very effective. HEPA filter, carbon scrubs, both are good. I know ABS is what one part should be printed with. Would PTG work to get the printer up and running? I can't print ABS at the moment because of pets. Um, PTG won't last. So if you enclose it, it's really not gonna last. If you don't enclose it, the concern I'd maybe think you'd have is some of the tolerances because ABS has a higher shrinkage and the parts are, the parts are print, um, prints. <laughs> the tolerances of the parts are designed for the ABS shrinkage factor in mind. So, if you were going to do that, I would say you'd probably want to print a few parts that are going to be fitting inside of each other and figure out what scale factor you need to apply to the PTG to basically make it where it's going to work. But I, I don't I don't know if I would go through the trouble. I would almost see... If I were you, I would look into paying for the printed parts. Either the printed board program, uh, Cyborg sells printed parts with their kits, but if you is an option, um, but if you don't want to go that route, then yeah, I would look at like print it forward. The amount of time that goes into building a boron, the, to, to build it up, just to tear it down, to replace every printed part, it doesn't sound fun. And I feel like, although it might not sound like a big deal, now, in, it, when you get to that point, you're gonna be like, yeah, I know I absolutely should have just, just gotten them an ABS and paid or whatever. Some people have tried PTG and the ones I know uh, that did it did not last long enough to print replacements yeah I, I really don't i don't recommend it i understand the concern again with abs printing in your pets but if that is the reason then i would probably just uh, save up some extra money to to again do the printed forward or one of the options out there for printed parts fabrico has like commercial printed forward programs cyborg has you know i think we showed with this kit that it was like an extra 120 dollars for the printed parts which seems really fair to me. What is this? Oh, wow, that's just a loose cap. Mm. 
I don't know what of this we really are going to be needing, but we're getting we're getting closer. We're getting closer to having everything torn down. I just I want to tear it all down now so we don't have to stop mid-assembly to disassemble stuff. Uh, C PIF is another option. Yeah, I think that's the one I was mentioning. The I have a full PLA underwire and it holds strong for about half a year. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's... I'm pumped that you did that <laughs> in PLA. There you go. So yeah, if you don't enclose it, I guess you can get away with it. But if you're, I don't know, I don't know. It still wouldn't be my choice or my recommendation. <clears throat> okay, what have we got left here? We've got printed parts, which we're definitely not needing. I'm gonna take off the glass from this now. We're gonna be using the bed, but we're going with Oregon with a mag base that comes with this kit. We'll move this, let's actually take out. Got a bed. So we'll head an x-axis. I'm not even gonna, I'm not, still not gonna mess around with. We'll just put this off to the side. Printed forward is available everywhere and you can work with the provider and get a customer wanted parts in a lot of cases. Yeah, I know that Fabrico provides the, like an option for LDO ones. You can get just the functional pieces or the cosmetic pieces as well, like the skirts and stuff. I don't know what they're called. They're not called, they're not called cosmetic pieces, but. Okay, it's pretty much everything. It's 153, I've got an hour and seven minutes left. So I say we try to get the frame going. This is gonna be a big cleanup later. Okay. Let me try to get caught up really quick. Uh, underwire, for me, I'm going to probably go with a bento box or a full air purifier. Nice. Yeah, I've got a bento box here that has both HEPA and carbon. I'm, I was going to put this in the Trident. I still might. It's the one from Voxel PLA. So it's in, it's a printed in PETG. So I think it'll hold up fine. Uh, I mean, it's just going to sit in the corner. There's no stress on it and it's just going to move some air around. So we'll see. But yeah, this one's got the HEPA portion up top, and then carbon here. What I would really like to do is get a, like a um, particulate measuring sensor or VLC sensor I've seen where you can actually get a, like a, a number for how bad the air is. So that way I can see sort of what the air is like before, what the air is like during a print, enclosed, unenclosed in the printer. It's just a lot to it and I want to make sure that if I'm sharing information that it's as good as I can possibly get it. So we'll, we'll see, we'll, we'll see. But it's something I've wanted to do for a really long time. Cause I'm interested too. I mean, hell, I've been printing for a decade. It would be probably good to know that info a bit more than the kind of half put together, sorry, the half put together um, stuff I've seen. Is there a new strain relief for the bed? I hate the stock one. I don't know. I don't know if there's a new strain relief for the bed also uh, use the Nevermore Max version for room size carbon filter. Yeah, I'd like to probably invest in a big air room scrubber at some point, like one for the garage and one for the studio. I think it would be worth it. I'm pretty sure it was, um, oh, someone was talking about it not long ago. I'm still on the bench, but I have a new Nevermore board with sensors for that. What? Oh, I need more info, Shammy. I'm very curious. Accurate VOC sensors are really expensive. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure they are. I mean, something would be better than nothing. I, I grant you, I mean, maybe it won't get down to the exact, but like, if it can say, at least a range, I'd be happy with. I'll DM you some info on getting it. Cool, that sounds awesome, Shammy, appreciate it. Exhausted outside, it's better to export than capture. I, I agree, but that's not an option for everybody. But yeah, I agree, if you can vent it outside, that's great. It's just not an option for everyone. Okay, let's see. Let's see how this starts. Someone said, I think we have to tap 
an extrusion. Let's see if we see anything about that here. So, <laughs> you're gonna build a robot. This machine can meme, burn, and electrocute you if you're not careful. Please read the entire manual. Special thanks to the Vaughn team, Dark Dog, and the testers. So printed parts are identical to the Switchfire or all other Vaughn parts. We've got hardware things. We've got, what is this? Schematic representation of the position of printed parts. This diagram defines the location of this area. Schematic representation of the position of the printed parts. This diagram defines the location of this area to make it easier to find the corresponding printed part in subsequent heat inserts. However, the diagram is reference only and does not actually match 100%. Okay. Oh. Maybe this is for if you get their... This might be for if you get their printed parts. I think that's what this is. Maybe you can find a sponsor to work with. This would be able to loan one or something for a video. Yeah, that would be... That would be cool. I mean, I get it's something I think everyone's interested in, right? Like, nobody that has a 3D printer wants to be breathing in unnecessary fumes that are, you know, potentially harmful to them. I just, the entire time I've been printing for a decade, I've looked and I've asked and I've seen and the information's been kind of all over the place. And the general consensus I've gotten is, ah, in most normal circumstances, it's not really that bad. It's not gonna have any detrimental effect. I mean, I'm sure that's depending on the volume and you know are you running one printer occasionally or are you living in a farm of printers but having a little more info would be would be nice i feel too lazy just hanging out on live stream in the middle of the week <laughs> well it's only another hour dustin and you can get right back to work okay would a PETG frame be decent for a Voron? that's funny that, that's like the second question of that in the last bit here it's not recommended it will if you're enclosing it, it won't last long. If you're not enclosing it, it might last for a while, but there's other considerations as well, like PTG, the flex, the shrinkage. I, I don't recommend it. Uh, oh, you're on vacation. Oh, well, there you go, then, then enjoy. <laughs> you're supposed to be a little lazy on vacation. Okay, so we have an absolute metric, like ton of heat inserts to install, a ridiculous amount. I, <laughs> I don't know that I even want to do heat inserts on stream in this case, what, do we want to do heat inserts on stream or no? Because I'm thinking we probably won't. I will likely, I will likely do this before as much as possible next Wednesday's build. Um, so that way we're not spending half the stream distracting me while I try to install brass inserts. The giveaway is for a, uh, the, the giveaway is for a pool, a pool of polymaker filament. <laughs> yeah, we won't, we won't do these on stream. This is, this is wait, there's just so, so many. Okay, so extrusion tapping. In the process of converting the Ender 3B2 to Switchfire, we need to tap some of the extrusions. Only later will we be able to mount the printed parts in the schematic and the extrusions marked in blue need tapping on both ends. Okay, so this is basically saying, so we got one, two, so it looks like all 4040s from what I'm seeing here. 2040 is good, 2040 is good, 2020 is good, and then this one in the center is all the kind of hacked up, um, the hacked up 4040 is already, it's already tapped. So, no heat set simulation, yeah, we won't, we won't do that. <clears throat> Baylor, thank you for everything you do, I hope you had a good holiday, and I hope you're ready for this awesome year to come. Thank you so much, Baylor, I, I appreciate that, I hope you had a great holiday too. I am excited, lots of moving and new house and family moving out here and Jackson turning a year and a, like it's crazy a lot of stuff happening but all good things and I'm I'm super excited for all of the builds and just stuff to come so I, I appreciate thank you very much uh the question I've got for starters is what are we tapping with is it a is it an m4 Oh. Hey, Iconic, how's it going? Uh, sorry, I can't get it as I am 
partner with Polymaker, please take me out of the giveaway. If you win, I'll re-roll, Matt. I won't, I won't let you win. <laughs> I'll, we'll re-roll. Okay, so I'm taking off these end pieces. It's M5. Okay, so M5 is what we need. So I'm starting off by taking off these caps. Let me zoom out a little bit. Has anyone else tried printing his parts in PC? I think PC would likely be fine. Okay, so we have, I don't know, I'm assuming these need to come off too. I'll probably, I got some Goog on, um, oh, it's, <laughs> I, I never use it, yet it's on my desk. I got Goog on, so I'll use that to get rid of the adhesive from the rail and get these cleaned up before. <clears throat> And I think, Chief Lenny, I think it was not, it was a year ago for either my birthday or Christmas, got me a set that is a tap set that I can use with a drill that'll be way quicker than the hand tap set. I've got a stool hidden back here. Let's see. Uh, now the question is, where is all of that stuff? I didn't realize that we were going to be doing this. Um, Wow. Holy cow, one second. Okay. I opened <laughs> I opened it the wrong way. Perfect. Okay, so we've got M6. This is probably M5. I think I M5. Sick. Okay, M5. So I am just going to... And we're positive this is M5, right? Let me... I'm sure you're right, it sounds right, but it's gotta be M5. There's a lot of stuff, it's usually M3 or M5, but... Yeah, the screws are M5. Okay. I believed you guys. I just wanted to make sure before I do some silly. Okay, so I've only tapped a few things, but my game plan is I've got some, um, like, oil or tap liquid stuff that I'm going to use, and then just basically going to drill. This is already... Wait, this is already tapped. Hold up. <laughs> These are M5, but triple check is I'm often wrong. <laughs> yeah, so it looks like one of the pieces, maybe it depends on which version of the Ender 3 you're converting off of, but this is, this piece is good. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And this one, we already basically said we don't need to do because it's the centerpiece. So there's that, that removes some, not everything. Okay. So these ones are not, these ones are not. These ones are... Well, that makes it easier. So, a lot of it is. Yeah, there's only one actual... There's only one piece of extrusion that needs to be tapped. So, that's sick. Uh, let's... Let's do the giveaway. So, I'm gonna... I'm gonna sit since I took the stool out. So, if you have not filled out the form in chat, I'm gonna let it go for two minutes, and then we will do the drawing for the... Uh, spool of filament. So I'm going to, here's what I'll do. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to click on it if you haven't already, and then I'm going to unpin it, run to the garage to get the stuff we'll need for this, and then I will be back and we'll draw. Let me make sure, is there any... Nice. Hopefully we got enough juice in this. Okay, so I'm unpinning it now because it's that's just got to have been enough time to click. Uh, unpin message. What do we got likes? 176 likes! Nice! Let's see, let's see. Can we get to 200 before I get back from the garage? <laughs> It'll be a minute. Let's see if we can do it. I'll be right back. Let me, I'm gonna take this off. Okay, be right back.
Oh my gosh, we're at 194. We're so close. That's awesome. Okay. All right, let me go ahead and do this. Hopefully I filled the form out that I filled up part of the stream. All right, let's do this. There's 153 entries and we will, I don't want to show them yet. Download, download, extract. Okay. Okay, so how many did I say? So 155, yeah, 155 replies. We have got, make sure everybody transferred over. Hundred and, we're missing one. How are we missing one? Oh, there's, okay, I'm gonna, I don't know if somebody snuck in or what, but I'm gonna try one more time to download it. I want everyone to, want everyone to be there. Let's see. Download. Cool. Extract all. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's let's one more time. Replace existing file. Done uploading. That's the one I just looked at. I don't, I don't know. It, you know what? Someone had to have entered. That's what it is. There was one, someone entered twice then because the only time it's ever done that is when it auto detects if there's a matching entry. So, okay, let's, we should be good. No. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the form was up for like 40 minutes. Nobody mentioned that you should have mentioned it wasn't visible. It, if it's not pinned, you, it might have required a refresh, but I, I left it up for 40 minutes and mentioned it a bunch of times, so. <sighs> okay, well, this is the last the last giveaway of the year, uh, which is wild. Again, it's the last, the last stream of 2023. It's been an awesome year. We've built some great printers. We've broken some things. We've had a lot of fun. Um, I've learned a lot from failing and trying as, as well as from everyone in chat. So I appreciate everyone also that's provided feedback or insight or things to check when we're troubleshooting stuff. It's been a ton of fun and uh, yeah, just thankful to be able to come here every single week and hang out and just nerd out on some 3D printer stuff. So uh, as always, thank you to Polymaker for allowing us to give away a spool of filament every single week. If you haven't won before or if you haven't been to one of these before, I will email the winner within the next 24 hours with a form. If you're in the US or Canada, Polymaker will send you a gift card. If you're in uh, anywhere else, you'll end up being able to choose between a bunch of filaments, PLAs, ABSs, PTGs, or ASAs on a big list, and uh, they will ship that out. Uh, because of the holidays, I mentioned this last week, but I would give them a week or two to respond to the form. I just, I think that things are a bit more backed up than normal. I know Nick, who's one of the main people over at Polymaker uh, with the, on the creator side of things, is moving. And uh, also the 3D Print General got hired on, so I'm sure there's some training going on. So anyways, <laughs> enough, enough of that. Let's, let's, um, let's do this. So how many times are we going to be shuffling? How many times should we shuffle? Let's do... The range is between 8 and 18. 8 and 18. How many times should we shuffle? Jermaine says 9. No water. I think I need water at some point here. Uh, I see two 9s. I see two 12s. Uh, I see a couple 6s. I don't want the 6s. John. We'll do... 12. We'll do 12. We'll do 12. 12 is good. It's twice as it's six times two. So you we'll get both of them. Alright, here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Alrighty, on that note, here we go. Good luck everyone. Patrick H, you are our winner. Patrick H, you are the final. 
final winner of the year. Congratulations. We'll do, uh, we gotta do the cheer, standing ovation. Congratulations, Patrick. You are our final winner and I will, uh, I will email you in the next 24 hours then. So there he is. There he is. Patrick H in the chat. <laughs> Congrats. So as far as I know, also, I, Polymaker hasn't said anything about not continuing to do spool sponsors going into 2024. So hopefully this will continue. I should probably reach out. Um, I also may try to do some additional giveaways in 2024. Um, we didn't do, I think we did, did we, do, did we do a celebratory stream this year or no? Maybe we didn't. I think we did. Did we do a two year? I don't really remember. We didn't do a whole ton. I didn't do anything for Christmas. Um, next year we'll do at least one celebratory stream, if not two. And maybe I can get some other manufacturers to, to also sponsor some giveaway stuff, but we'll see. Uh, let's see. If you're going to use a hand drill, it goes super slow. It's crazy easy to thread at an angle. Okay. I will. No big stream this year. Yeah, this, we did we did the 100K subscriber stream on the main channel. I guess that probably, and that was, I think that probably burnt me out. It was so much work. It was incredible. There was tons of people, but like the logistics behind getting all the manufacturers together, spreadsheeting what's global versus domestic and get like, it was, it was like months in the making. And I say, I think that probably was like, I was like, okay, that's probably it for, for a bit. So I think we'll, we'll try to do things not quite as large as that, but we'll see. I'll figure it out. Housewarming party stream. That could be fun. That could be fun. Okay, let's let's try this. So we have got some magic magic aluminum cutting fluid. Let's go a little closer so you can see this. There we go. So we're gonna go with this. I'm going to basically just drop some on the I'm going to drop some on the ends and then we're going to just try this. <laughs> Hopefully I don't screw things up too bad. I've done it before and it didn't go badly. So I'm sort of confident that we'll be sort of confident that we'll be okay. But okay. So That sounds like a task. Wait, what does the, the stream? Drill taps like this are designed for drill pressure, not handguns. I've used this before and it's worked out well though. I can clamp it. Do we think I should clamp it to the quartz? I'm, I can grab a clamp. If it was really magical, it would cut the extrusion length. I agree. It's not going to work. You're using aluminum cutting fluid, but cutting aluminum. Got to go. Happy New Year. Give Jack Jack hugs. I definitely will. Happy New Year, Lisa. Oh, coordinating prizes. Yeah. Okay. Let's try this on one and see how it goes. Let's just, I'm just like, we're going to go for it. I feel like I've done it before and it worked out okay. So I'm going to hold it firmly and I am just going to go for it. So I didn't go all the way. I think I need to go one more time. Uh, that actually went, that was pretty simple. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit more fluid to help because I feel like it kind of in the end there got a little bit stuck up. I don't know exactly, uh, have to tap some rails. Yeah. The, um, I didn't realize it actually until today that we were going to have to tap anything. It'd be kind of cool if they included, I guess it depends, right? Cause there's different enders, but let's see. So that's how far in we've got. Um, I 
I don't know how deep I need to really run this. Damn, it's really nerve wracking, but I don't know. Uh, Sam is doing a stream about the new Ender XZ printer. Wonder how this will compare. Make sure you clean your drill bit before going the second time. Yeah, let me grab some napkins. <clears throat> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back in a third time in this case. I just want to see. I think I can get it to go a little bit further in. I will say though that it it was very smooth. Like there was not a whole lot of resistance here. Get these shavings off. Okay, let's go one last time. That feels pretty good. Okay, one down. I gotta ask you funny um, for the link for these specific pieces, if anyone's interested, because they, they seem to work really, really well. Now make sure the aluminum is removed from the groove in the tab. Sometimes it gets stuck in there and fuds up the tab. Okay, good call. I want to do like a chef's kiss. I'm really, really pleased with how these are turning out. I guess I won't do the chef kiss until we're done with all eight of them. Um, if note, this is messy. <laughs> Maybe not an inside job. Um, let me make sure, I'm just gonna grab one of these screws and make sure that the threads are, threads are threading. I think it might just need to get worked through. There we go. Yeah, good. I know, don't jinx it. I, I... <laughs> I'll probably, uh, when I'm done with all of them, drive a screw through all of them really quickly just to clean up the, clean up the threads a bit. So, okay, we're done with two of them. So two down, one quarter in. Let's go to the next. We'll just do, I'm just going full all the way in on one pass versus going in and out. Uh, well, there's aluminum that we use and then alley, alley minium. <laughs> that makes me think of, uh, did you guys watch, uh, 3D or now he's back three. I got used to saying breaks and makes, but 3D printer noob, 3D maker noob. I, I got, I'm mixing them up, but Joe, uh, he did a video on the uh, millennium mill and he, he makes that distinction. He says al aluminium. All right, I think we're good. That's three down. I'm super thankful that G4, I've got a hand tap and die set, but it's a lot slower than this. <laughs> and my hands, I, I, like, they hurt all the time from doing things. So I'm definitely a fan of this over, over just doing them by hand.
All right. <clears throat> There's oils everywhere, but we've got one side done. Hand tapping, yeah, hand tapping sucks. I originally bought the hand tapping kit for the ANET AM8, uh, the conversion, and I did end up tapping those by hand, and it's it sucked. <laughs> it, it absolutely sucks. I get it, like if you have to occasionally do something, then you know it's nice to have, but boy, it's not something I'll ever volunteer for. <laughs> If you had a bench drill press, uh, remove the belt from the top of it and spin it manually, it makes a hand tap set. Wait, if you have a bench drill press, remove the belt from the top of it and spin it manually. Huh. I don't have, I, uh, drill press has been on the list. So I'm probably gonna get all the tools I've got, well, other than this one, because there was uh, a gift from G Funny and it, it's really nice. Uh, all the tools that I've gotten have been Ryobi tools because I. I like that they have a huge selection and they're a good, like for me, because I'm not a, you know, doing a lot of construction stuff. They're great for like DIY stuff. So I was looking at the Ry Ryobi drill press and once we get settled into the new place, I'll probably end up getting that. And then I've also been looking at like a, a bandsaw, the Ryobi bandsaw. I tried those and after I broke three, I went back to hand tapping. You tried what, using these with a the drill? Or you're saying you tried it with a drill press? <clears throat> okay, here we go. Holding it, holding it firm. <clears throat> uh, those in a drill, gotcha. The rubber free drill press is the same as Ryobi, but cheaper, interesting. I hate that they lock you in with their batteries, so now I have a ton of DeWalt for a DIY. <laughs> yeah, that's really the, because the, the batteries are expensive. I've probably got now, uh, for last year's Christmas, my parents got me like the uh, Ryobi big battery station that can charge up to four batteries at once. So I've got that and then like three smaller batteries, two or three beefier batteries. I've got the orbital sander, the impact driver, their drill, um, uh, a, a, what else do I have? A, um, a saw, I can't think of the saw right now. Miter saw, yeah, I've, I've got a fair bit now. I mean, this is the first place we've rented that was a house. So there's been more stuff like space for tools and things like that. And now that we're moving into our own house, like there's, I'm gonna need to use some tools. Okay, so this makes six out of eight, so we have two more. <clears throat> two more, then I can chef kiss. I need to get me some tools. Yeah, it's one of those things where like, I just started when we moved here, I needed to build some like just fairly cheap workbenches in the garage and I just went and got the lowest cost two by fours from Home Depot and uh, some ply and uh, I was doing it with a like a circular saw or skill saw and um, it sucked I, I just I'm not good with tools like that I haven't used them before there's technique involved and I you know watched videos but it's still like to get you have to get a feel for how to hold it and stuff and then I ended up getting a miter saw last year and then I went to recut all the two by fours and boy was that nicer with like a stop, I got uh, like a stop lock set up for it. So you just slide them, go, slide them, go versus, you know, measure, mark, like it just, yeah, having, I'm not saying you can't do things without having fancy tools, absolutely not. You can totally do it, but it certainly makes things a lot nicer and more fun when you've got the right tool for the right job. 
I can cut a straight line with a circular saw. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I, I wish I could. I, I am. <laughs> I definitely wish I could. I mean, maybe with practice, but right now, absolutely not. I've tried cutting ply across and it sucks. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Okay, we're down to the last one. Last one. Uh, I am probably going to buy into a new battery ecosystem. I used to be all DeWalt, but have not been happy. So debating on going to Ryobi or Milwaukee. Isn't, isn't it only say that Ryobi and Milwaukee are from the same uh, place? And it's just, I mean, there's some differences. Don't get me wrong, but aren't they from the same manufacturer? I think those are the two that are, I'm, I'm almost positive. I don't have any complaints about, um, Ryobi, but then again, I'm not a hardcore builder of things, so, and I don't have much to compare against, right? I do really like this, I will say though, this this little Milwaukee drill uh, is so nice because it's really compact. It's been quite powerful. I mean, we're tapping with it. Like, it, I really like this, so, uh, which is not Ryobi, but other than that, for like general stuff I've needed, it's been great. My my trimmer, my leaf blower, all that is all Ryobi, and it's been great. It's their, that one's their 48 volt setup. All right. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I am super excited with how this turned out. Uh, prior to this, I've only ever hand tapped and that was probably, it was when I was living with my buddy Jim. So that would have been six years ago and I've used this once for a tap. So I, I went into this fairly confident that we would be able to make it work. But the fact that we didn't break this and everything seems to have worked out is, is exciting. So. I, I, I once again will say that I wish that I wish that the kit came with um, I wish that the kit came with this extrusion already tapped versus you needing to tap the existing one, but I'm sure it comes down to a couple things. One is cost, and two because you can use an Ender 3 V2 or an Ender 3 Pro, and, and based off the instructions, it seems like some of them require more tapping than others. So. The only way they'd be able to make the kit work would be if they swapped out all three extrusions with their own and adding three more extrusions, I'm sure would add up, would, would adding, ugh, would increase the cost of the kit. So uh, I'm getting one for 315 shipping plus nice. You make it, you made it look easy. Thanks. <laughs> that was the goal. <laughs> I will say if there's anything, um, I don't know how it would have been without this, but this magic tap stuff, although it didn't cut the extrusions to size, like John said, uh, I still think it helped out. And um, I, for anyone that didn't see the full thing, I used one hand to hold this as much and, and apply pressure downwards. So that way the end was flat up against the quartz. So a solid surface. And then uh, based off of the recommendation, I just, just slow and steady. But I do think that going all the way is probably safer than going partially, taking it out, going back because then there's more ch chance of a um, more chance of an aluminum chip to sort of dislodge or get around the the tap or the thread um, and also there wasn't very much resistance honestly like the whole way through from beginning to end at the consistent speed there was not really a lot of resistance so yeah that was awesome very nice okay so now to clean up let me grab the trash really quick it is super messy. I've got oils and, and aluminum chips all over the place now. Let me grab the trash. Cutting oil is a must have. Steady speed is also important. Well, good. <laughs> I'm glad that I, I'm glad that not only I had the oil, but I decided when we moved from California to here that this was important enough that I should bring it with us. Cause I haven't used it again in, in really, really long time. So. Okay, let's throw this bit in here. Try to get all the shavings and fluid into the trash. I don't think we need these end caps. I'm not going to keep them. 
the rubber feet are also going the PPU feet that came with the printer. Let's see. Definitely want to get as much of this as I can. The idea of stepping barefoot on an aluminum shaving sounds awful. And Erin has been pretty understanding of plastic shavings being on the ground, but I don't know that she'd be quite so kind. Start dragging aluminum all over the place. Okay. I'm also gonna just brush this off. What time is it? It is 2.33. I don't know that we're going to really start assembly today. Today feels like a prep day. I'll probably right now just clean up these extrusions, put a little goo gun on them to get rid of the adhesive from the, from the feet. That'll probably be it. And then between now and next week, between now and next week, I will do all, I'll finish the printing because I still have a lot of printing to do. I, I'm hoping that I'm getting close to being done with the primary color parts and then I'll switch to accent. And then I'm also gonna print out a handful of mods uh, that were recommended to me for this conversion, which are, which are just printed parts. It's the same bomb, just different printed parts. And I will show while we're building the modded version and the version that's included in the GitHub repository, so that way we can see sort of the differences between them. That way, if anyone, that way, if anyone is building, we don't need these. I'm gonna get rid of this. That way, if anyone's building, they can decide whether they want to, um, whether they want. To, gosh, I'm very far out here. And hey, they expect you to just tap their own extrusion. I, I get. I get it, but I've also broken a tap in there myself, and I know what I'm doing. <laughs> hey, what's up, man? Sorry, I was zoning out there for a minute. Uh, yeah, I didn't know, honestly, until we were tearing this apart, and someone mentioned tap in in chat. I didn't realize I was going to be tapping anything. I this was the first. So there was eight eight holes. Um, I've only ever tapped for an ANIT upgrade like six years ago, uh, threaded and tapped, and and one. I tried one on the Mercury build for uh, for the belt tensioners on the front of the AB once, just one. So I'm glad that I have this stuff. But yeah, I think that that's something that should probably be should be plastered a bit more heavily on the on the product page. To an extent, I understand that there's not a whole lot they can do. I mean, it would be cool if they, you know, what? I no, okay. <laughs> so I need like. I need to wash my hands, I got oils all over them, but I wanna show you if you didn't see. So this kit is supposed to work for an Ender 3 V2 or an Ender 3 Pro. And their manual shows that the 4040 extrusions need to be threaded and tapped. And so what I'm guessing, in, in my case, I only had to actually thread and tap one of them, the other two were. So I'm guessing is that if you have maybe the other model of Ender, you'll have to do more threading and tapping. And the reason why they don't include these extrusions is because it would add the cost and the goal is to try to make this more affordable but it would be cool if they if they sold these extrusions as an option so like if someone decided hey i'm willing to pay an extra i, I don't know what it would be 30 bucks 40 bucks for the extrusions that they can do that as an add-on item and i understand it's tough for shipping because then it'd be like what do they do a separate box for adding them on or whatnot but i also think that not a ton of people probably have uh, tap setups at their house. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Killa? What kind of probe am I going to use? So we're going to start with the default setup, which is just the standard. Um, I mean, I don't even have it. It's the standard Omron. It's the standard Omron probe, but we're going to be enclosing this printer and it comes with panels for it. So we're going to use those. And my experience with the Omron probe on the original Switchwire, uh, the LDO kit I built was not great. It, it was okay. And then once I started trying to print ABS, I felt like the, the readings were all over the place and it wasn't compensating correctly. And so I switched over to Clicky on that and it's been great since. So we're gonna start with Omron, but uh, Big Tree Tech I think is sending out their Eddy current probe that I believe is uh, fits in the Stealth Burner. So maybe we'll do that. And if not that, we might end up going with Clicky, but for now, because it's what the kit includes, and I like to try in most cases to assume that the person buying it is intending to use what's included in the kit, we'll start with the probe and hope for the best, so. 
Uh, if you're adding the extrusions, what's the difference from the actual switch wire then? You mean if you're, if they're, they should offer it as an option, probably spin off another channel like Mama is here. You should, we'll surely watch. Yeah, I'm excited to see your, your streams, man. I mean, I've seen a couple of them that you did on the main, uh, or the current channel, but I'm excited to see your streams if you end up moving forward with it. Yeah, I get, I guess you're, you're right, uh, Elizabeth. I, if you end up swapping out extrusions, you're using a lot less of the original Ender 3, because in reality, this is what we're using. Um, this is what we're using, right? We're using the stock PCB bed heater. Um, we're replacing the glass for the included magnet and flex plate. We're using the stock power supply, which is the Meanwhile LRS 35024. We are using the Y motor, I believe. Uh, so one of the motors, the extrusions, and the board. So if you remove, like let's say you remove the three extrusions from the equation, then at that point it's like, yeah, you're just, you're only using the bed, the board, the power supply. It's not like maybe it doesn't make sense to harvest the parts from it. So I guess I understand it. I just, I wish it wasn't the case. Uh, and who knows, maybe, maybe they can offer, so maybe they don't offer a, a um, maybe they don't offer extrusions, but they offer for people that don't have a, a tap set. Like one of maybe they can include like a hand tap with an M5, um, you know, M5 for it. I don't know. Uh, needs more Steve builds on this project. He's building a uh, the Rev C. His has been looking great. You really don't want to give cheap taps to people. Okay, well then I don't know. I'm out of I'm out of ideas. Um, but yeah, I, I wasn't anticipating you were going to have to do it. And my recommendations are this Tap Magic aluminum cutting fluid is I've used it every time I've ever had to thread and tap, and it's been awesome. And I will reach out to G Funny to figure out the exact link i know it was from amazon because that's where it came from but the uh the exact link for this set of of taps has been really really good uh tiago hey thank you so much for the 20 dollars man uh hey, how's it going how's the how's the a1 going we'll do we'll this air horn for it do you still have that rep wrap i do i do still have that board man I was just, um, thank you very much, Diago. I, I was just, how was your, how was your Christmas, buddy? I was just talking about this board to Steve Builds because he, when he came back from um, uh, one of his trips, he had showed me that he had a rep wrap firmware board. And yeah, so this is a mellow board, printing nonstop since I got it nice. Most, uh, mostly multicolor stuff that you've been wanting to do or just like general printing. Uh, so yeah, this is the board. It's a mellow board, but in collaboration with Team Gloomy. Let me see if I can focus in on it. So this will eventually go into a printer. I don't know what. I This would have been kind of a cool printer to have it go inside of, but the the issue is, is that I don't want, like, I don't know much about RepRap firmware other than the things I heard and the things I've seen over the years, and I don't want this build to become a frustrating experience that I am like, yeah, everything was great, but the config was tough when it's not intended for RepRap firmware, especially because I'm reviewing the kit. So I don't know, but we, we do need to install this into something. I completely agree. It's been staring me in the face for the last year now. Uh, Multicolor stuff, nice. You gotta send me some photos. The multicolor stuff on the on the A1 or A1 or P1, any of the, the bamboo stuff has been pretty freaking awesome. Okay, uh, been fun guys, got a split, have a happy and safe new year. Hey, thanks for hanging up, Strife. Uh, I will schedule next Wednesday's stream. I gotta figure out what Aaron's schedule is, uh, but next week we will actually start building. Uh, I will finish the printing parts. There's still a handful more to go and then I'll move on to the accent pieces and then I will get all the heat inserts installed and next week we'll actually We'll actually start assembling. So let's take a let's take a quick look now that we've got the tapping done. So we've got frame first. Move the Y extrusion forward. Interesting. Okay. Oh, I wonder if I kind of goofed. I'm not entirely sure, but it almost looks like 
I need to reassemble it. <laughs> it almost looks like I need to reassemble it using the exact same hardware it came with. So that'll be fun. I put all the screws and bolts and stuff on the ground over there. So I'll be running around trying to find that. So you basically assemble it like the regular Ender 3 would be, except for the middle extrusion. That one slides forward further, 20 millimeters. So that way you use two of the holes that are there and then you use, M, um, I guess these are probably M5, M5 drop-in nuts. Then you tighten that back up. Hmm. I'll take a look through this just to make sure I, but yeah, we'll start off next week with the frame and see how far along we can get. So. <clears throat> Uh, just watch a ton of Chris's basement to learn rep rep firmware. Yeah, Chris does an awesome job of breaking down, breaking down the uh, firmware, all the different firmware stuff. We can chill. We can chill. We'll take the last uh, 15 minutes here and just hang out for a bit. If anyone's got anything like random topics or whatnot, let me grab. I'm gonna run really quickly to grab a glass of water though. I'm super thirsty. Putting ABS in here and the lights and everything. I'm just <laughs> sweating. I gotta get something. Um. Let's see, they gave me one of those two. I really want to use it and play with RepRap, but can't decide what I have the time to mess with. Yeah, that's been my biggest issue is that I've had the board. I'm super excited to play around with it, but for the time it'll take me to figure out the printer, do the like actual assembly, which will probably require changing connections, diving into the firmware, configuring the firmware. Like, it's, it's a huge, um, it's a huge time. There's a lot of time involved with that. So maybe what we'll do is, is we'll open it up on stream and just stumble through it together on stream. That might be a good idea. Uh, ask me if you need to get that NG somewhere. My DMs are open. Okay, sounds great. Yeah, let me go grab some water and then we can chill for another, you know, 10, 15 minutes and then we'll, we'll call it for the day. We're back. All right, we are back. Okay, so what is, what is everyone's 3D printing goal or plan or project goal for 2024? Like, is there a printer build? Is there a certain project 3D printing related or it doesn't have to be 3D printing related, just like a certain project that you're wanting to do. I've got a handful, uh, one is a Nerf gun or a blaster project. It's, it's anyone that's been 3D printing for a long, long time probably has heard of it. Joel made a video on it like six years ago. And when I worked at Matter Hackers, a coworker had one. It's the Project FDL uh, 3, I think is what it's called. And they used to be, they were a company that sold kits for this. And then they went out of business. They open sourced the entire project. And I have ordered all the PCBs from PCBWay. I've sourced pretty much all the electronics other than I think two or three last things and so I need to finish sourcing that and that's definitely something that I want to um it's definitely something that I want to finally sit down and print it needs a lot of PETG printing so I haven't done a lot of PETG printing lately I mean this thing it's comments are rolling in really quickly let me grab my mouse and move um <clears throat> okay so we've got uh idex trident nice that's a really good that's a big project. Uh, Voron Phoenix, never gonna happen though. How come? Just time or cost? I, I imagine cost is gonna be a big factor for a lot of people because 
I don't know if LDO is working on a kit, but either self-sourcing or kit based off the price of like a 2.4 Trident, I, I imagine it's got to be like, I have a pretty big range, but in my head, I would think the cost will be anywhere between 2500 to $5,000, which I know is a massive range. I just don't know. Like, I don't, I haven't seen the bomb for Phoenix, but I know it's like four beds. So four heaters, four flex plates, more motors. Uh, like there's, I know there's a lot of additional electronics and extrusion. So it's probably 2,500 is probably way too low. It's probably more like 3,500 to 5,000 if I had to guess. Uh, you're also, you're also about to build an FPL3. Nice. How did you, where did you get your, um, where did you get your boards for it? Sourcing the electronics was, was tricky. I, I ordered a lot of them from like three places primarily, uh, but shipping was expensive. I had to order parts for it from all over. I, I'd show you guys, but the whole drawer is just full of crap. Well, I'll show it when we're closer to actually building it. Uh, my 24 goal is finish my Trident Easy Bake build. Have I seen that? I don't know that I've seen, I don't know if you, have you posted that on Twitter? I don't know if I've seen that. No, um, and all wheel drive boron, nice. Uh, I know that Mandic is going to be building a some kind of crazy boron. It looks like a trident with CNC to all wheel drive parts. So I don't know if that's gonna be, I don't know if you're here, if you're still in chat, um, Alan, if you were going to be doing a video or if that's what you're thinking, you might start with your stream series, but that looks the, the like top tier across the board as far as hardware going into that thing. Finish Everest, nice, build a Voron 2.4, then doing an Ender 3 NG conversion. Oh, sick. That's awesome. Uh, well, I'm really, okay, I am so far behind. Let me try to get, <laughs> I didn't realize how many comments came in. Tap changer, awesome. I'm in the middle of making a PT bottle into filament for a school project. That's super cool. Not buying another printer will be a hard task. Uh, you can relate to that. Uh, the Bodron helmet with a RGB. I don't know what that is. I'll look it up. K3 and rat rig, sick. I do, uh, I do rockets and I am working on a video for 100% 3D printed rocket. Design takes time though. That's awesome. I, when I was younger, I was in scouts. Uh, I never made it to boy scouts. It was just cub scouts. So I was pretty young, but one of the things that we would do, or that we at least did at one point was, uh, did model rockets or made model rockets. And we, we did it like out in the desert, but there was also when I was really, I got really into them for a short period of time. Like I do with a lot of things in life and I remember my dad and me would go to the park and we shot a few of them up and then they like the cone came off and they have a parachute and they come back down and it was fun. Rockets are super cool. If Jackson is in the rocket stuff when he's older, I will be so about it. Uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Building mine right now. Okay, cool. Oh wait, you're building, wait, you're talking about, are you building a uh, project FTL? I haven't heard anyone talk about them in years. It's been when I worked at Matter Hackers, one of my coworkers, Alec, who was the video, you, you, if you watch old Matter Hackers videos, he was in all the videos, he had the chops, he had built one, and I was always checking all the cool stuff he was doing, and and I remember, I let him shoot me with it, because uh, I was like curious, how hard can a Nerf gun actually hit? And like, it, it hurt, <laughs> it slapped. Uh, but ever since then, I was like, okay, I gotta build one of these, these are so freaking cool, so I'm very excited to build this blaster. ERC FB2, that, that's me too. Gonna build a V0.2 this summer, nice. I have FDL3, I need to build, maybe I'll follow along. I don't know when we're gonna be building it, um, but that will be awesome. Stinger build, lower half stinger build. Cost, yeah, I, I get that, uh, Maple, it's a lot. I think if you, a project like that I think is easier to spend versus saving up and spending that massive chunk. It's easier to be like, cool, I've saved up and I'm buying the frame, and then I'm buying the hardware, and then I'm buying electronics, but the issue is how long will that take? And also when you get all the stuff, will the parts that you got still be accurate compared to where the project has moved on to? So uh, make it a Voron. Wait, 15, 15K? No. And close my Ender 3 is my main project once I have space for Voron 2.4. Build the Voron's route to keep updating my Ender 3, continue to work on home organizing stuff. Robots, maybe uh, some cosplay, nice. When you say home organizing, are you talking about like, just like home organizational stuff or things like home assistant, like smart home stuff? Making a recreator mark six. Nice. I really want to build the one that Stefan um, recently made a video on. I did a blaster links out of darts kit, super quick build and stupid fun. 
Yeah, I, I think I would have a lot of fun with that. Currently in the middle of a tiny tea. Tiny tea is awesome. Um, uh, zombies tiny tea turned out fantastic. Currently printing parts for the Ender 3 NG, Core XY Beta, and waiting for parts. I would love to build one of those. I want to wait till it's out of beta, but I, I'd like to build one of those as well. Make my garage into a workshop for my printers. That's a great goal. Steve said on stream, uh, it was about five or six K. Okay, cool. So I was, I guess with my, what did I say? Three and a half to five K. I wasn't too far off. I mean, on the higher side, I guess of that. I'll finish my 2.4s and redo my ender wire. So that is CAN bus and then I'm adding ERCF. Nice. I'm hoping, so the game plan is that the ERCF V2 is going on my switch wire and my switch wire is going to be open frame. I don't plan on, uh, I don't think I plan on using it for other things than PLA and maybe PTG. For ABS, multicolor, I'm fine with using um, Bamboo's setup, uh, but for PLA, it would be nice if I could use the ERCF. My concern is, is that with the previous ERCF 1.1, you were able to mount it to the top bar, the 3030 extrusion of a switch wire. The new one has the uh, tail, rabbit, I don't know what it's called, the feeder tail, cotton, cotton tail maybe is what it's called? Um, I, I don't I think it's a rabbit themed, uh, rabbit named buffer system. And it expands the ERCF outward. And I don't know if that's going to have any issues being mounted onto the 3030 extrusions. Hopefully someone will create some kind of a like support beam if needed, but that's the goal right now is going on the top of the, the switch wire. So we'll see. 2,500 sounds way low, but mental conversion to Canadian bucks is hard. I'm thinking five to 6,000 Canadian. Yeah, yeah, 2,500 was probably being a bit generous considering, I, I think a big part of it was I didn't exactly know all the parts that go into it. I've seen, I've seen bits of the Phoenix, but I just haven't looked fully at the bomb. My 3D printing goal for 2024 is to find space for more printers. Good luck, John. If you, if you figure it out, let me know. Uh, first, this ender conversion, then the ERCF. Cool, same, pretty much same as me. Ordered them from some random site like two or three years ago. <laughs> so you've been holding onto your parts for a while. Get to the printing business, making some money, convert the garage into a farm, and if time permits, build a boron to play around with. Sounds great. Mercury build on an S. Oh, sick. Yeah, the S. Can you do a conversion to a Mercury with the SV05? I know that on some of the some of the like Ender Five clones, if we can even call them clones of the Ender Five, but the the extrusions don't have channels in them. They're like smooth extrusions, and I think that would require modification to the printed parts or like drilling into them and tapping. I, I don't really know what would be required to go into that. Um. Holy crap, I am really behind chat. I, I don't think I'll catch up. Uh, <laughs> ball screws, lots of machine parts, Nema 23. <clears throat> Bomb for Phoenix is so wide, depending on if you can machine parts yourself. Gotcha, that's right. It doesn't have to be like sourceable parts. It has custom parts. I haven't posted yet, finishing up the Micron Plus to finish the Stinger as well. Dude, you are always, I, I enjoy watching what you're up to, Kelly, because you're always doing some crazy printer build. I feel like every other week it's like a different printer build. I know Stinger you've been working on for a while, which is looking awesome. I got the board way back at the ERC 2018. I think didn't get around to building it. Then COVID hit and I printed face covers for a long time. Gotcha. Gonna build Zmod. I'm going to try to raise money for my school to get a new printer since ours suck. That's a really great goal. Um, Estes rockets have been around for a long time. What is that? What is S? I don't know what that is. I love to do some rocketry with 3D printing. Great minor 3 d Clackender. Clackender is awesome. I highly recommend it. If you were you here at the beginning of the stream when I showed off Clackender before we took it apart? Hey, what's up, Dutch? We're trying. I, I gotta get off in a few minutes. Erin's been sick. She's getting over being sick. She's going into work today, but I need to give her like an hour before work to watch Jackson so she can eat some food and like sit and breathe for a bit. So. Uh, I have four 3D printed Nerf platters at the moment with four more in the shoot, two for my daughters than the FPL3. That's awesome. Yeah, I got uh, I got five of each PCB made. The PCBs are not populated, so I will have to solder everything. But as far as I saw, all the soldering is through hole components. So there's no surface mounted stuff. It shouldn't be that hard. Uh, and I've got a couple spares if I damage one. So, uh, and I think for a lot of the stuff, there was some stuff that was pricey, like the motor was the pricey, the, screen there's a screen that lets you adjust like speed and whether it's like single shot and that was kind of pricey when i say kind of pricey like 
I think it was like $35, $40, so not like crazy expensive, but compared to a lot of the other little electronic parts that were 50, 60 cents a piece, it was harder to justify buying multiple $40 motors and multiple screens. So, but everything, everything else that's smaller components, uh, I did get like double or triple. So that way I've got spares, uh, spares of them. Finally building the MMU three for the Mark IV. Nice. Can't wait for my kid to get older so we can launch rockets together. <laughs> that's awesome. Your Provoc will carry much of the Stinger stuff. Is Stinger a new project, Killa? Because I, I, I mean, I know it's an, like a crazy beefy bed slinger, but I hadn't seen it before. You posted it the other day, and then I saw Nathan posted a a short video of someone else's. I'll post the parts and such I have on Discord or, or Twitter. Awesome, that sounds great. The one step I built is the Mark V out of an Ender 3. Oh, you're talking about the, yeah, I'm talking, sorry, I'm talking about the one that he recently built, which I don't think was based off an Ender. I think it was a full, a full kit of parts from a, was a German, I think it was a German guy that designed it. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'm talking about like Gridfinity and wall organizers and stuff. I want to figure out a setup that lets me easily pick up tools and ro for robotic, oh, pack up tools for robotics competition. Nice. Yeah, Gridfinity, I had started, like, there's some, the base, like, the base grids are in a couple of these drawers, and then I just, I didn't get too heavily into it. I actually, I showed these off a couple times, but I, I looked at a lot of systems, um, and these are just cheap Harbor Freight organizers, and uh, they have been great. I've broken one, but they're so inexpensive compared to the other systems out there, and the biggest issue I have is that the they come with an assortment of sizes for the the inserts, but luckily you can just 3D print them. So most of what I need is the, you can't really see that so well, can you? Uh, I know you've seen these before, so it's probably kind of old news, but what I need primarily is a lot of the smaller ones. So all the yellow is what it came with, all the white is what I have um, printed out. And these are just awesome. I, I, really really like them i'm up to one two three four five six fully filled and i have two empty uh so it'll be interesting to see what i split bes between this and the gridfinity system that will live in the alex drawers that i get in the reason i like this is that it's so easy to just you know pack it up and if i need to take it between the garage and my room uh while the the gridfinity stuff what i'll probably end up doing is having a lot of stuff in the gridfinity setup and then designing or I think that a Gridfinity like carrying case already exists, but like printing out one of those, excuse me. So that way if I'm going between the studio and the garage, I don't have to manually carry Gridfinity trays that I will most inevitably trip and drop parts everywhere. I can just be like, cool, I need all these for the project, throw them all inside of this little briefcase thing that holds them in place, close it up and move it out to the garage. So, but these have been, these have been fantastic. Like, um, I, Things are still chaotic here and messy, and part of it is just that it's me. <laughs> uh, but these these little cases have been such a lifesaver for having some inkling of organization throughout all the various projects and brain <laughs> brain squirrels, <laughs> you know. Uh, let's see. Saw your stinger on Discord. Looks nice. I just want to build that one since I took apart my Neptune three for this project, but I knew it would take too long to print. Yeah, I, I, I completely understand it. I mean, it looks like a great kit to use the the parts that come with the printer. Again, if you've got all the parts for a printer already. 2.4, nice. There will be a Dremel add-on for Stealth Press. Awesome, super secret project. Ooh, exciting. Wait, Stealth Press Gen 2? Does that mean, does that mean I'm gonna have to reprint all the parts, Iconic? Or is some of the stuff gonna carry over? Because I, I, um, I still have, I need to fix Oh, that was another thing. The, the extruder gear on the, the switch wire needs to be reset. Um, but I pretty much have all the parts, the primary parts done for the stealth press. Um, should I hold off? <laughs> Are you telling me I should hold off or, or what? <clears throat> Going to try uh, a track, uh, trad rack too. I would like to. I think that it just came out of closed beta to open beta, and I'm not a huge fan of beta stuff. Like I know that even non-beta open source projects move very quickly, generally speaking, but with beta, I know myself, and if I build it and it's in beta and a new piece comes out, I'm instantly going to want to tear it out and put it in. So I'd rather wait until the creators of Tradrack are like, yeah, this thing is in like official release V1. I did the same thing with Boron Tap. I waited a lot longer actually than just release, and I've been happy with that. So, but I would like to, yes. 
Um, am I printing yet? Yeah, it's done, zombie. I got. I, I just applied for my. I just applied for my serial number. Okay, I'm almost caught up. I'm almost caught up. Happy hair. Happy hair is firmware. I will definitely be using that. Just did the frame on a Phoenix size printer is going to cost a very pretty penny from Asumi. Yeah, yeah. That's especially if you get quality extrusions from Asumi. Uh, RC car, nice. That's the ones that that's the ones that Steve's been doing, right? A couple of on his channel. I think he's built one or two of them. Stinger is Stinger is done soon. The project or your Stinger? Uh, how could you recommend something for the printer in two months? I'm going to build a Voron 2.4 R2. Nice. What do you mean? Could you recommend me something for the printer? What do you mean? Like which kit to go with or something like that? Estes are the rocket motors you can get literally anywhere. Gotcha. Okay. The ones that look literally like, um, like coin sorter, like the things that you put coin sorters in. If I remember correctly, they look almost exactly like the cardboard coin sorter things that you put in a coin sorting machine, but they're the rockets. That, it's been probably 20 years since I've looked at one of those really, but I think that's what I remember them looking like. Stinger got picked up by Provoc and I responded to Nathan's tweet. Sick, that's awesome. Uh, do you have something official now? Wait. I think I missed that uh, conversation. In that case, you're talking about the art. Yes, the, the Art Me 3D, which is a film extruder, which does come with a whole kit. That's what I'm talking about. I know that one's a lot more expensive. I think the the one you're talking about, the use recycled parts, is pretty inexpensive, which is awesome because it's a lot more. It's a lot more. Um, what's the word? Uh, uh, accessible. It's a lot more accessible to more people. They're Gridfinity cases. They're just a handle in the modules. That's, I'll probably print one of those out just to have a transferring. Okay, I think <laughs> I think I have to call it, um, but I'll rewind to the end. I have seen your video on Crack Enter just on it, waiting on the magnets to arrive. Nice. Don't forget the ERCF when you have time. ERCF is happening nice. It is, it is absolutely happening. Now that V2 is here, I'm going to source the parts uh, and we will, I promise you, Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a commitment. It is almost New Year. Probably finish this up in end of January, roughly. By end of April, we are we are printing with ERCF. By end of April, so four months, we're printing with ERCF. Hold me to it. <laughs> Hold me to it. <laughs> I'm already like was I was I. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> No ads on this stream. Awesome. That's great to hear. So I'll keep that setting then moving forward. Your stinger is completed. Okay, sweet. I figured. I saw it printing. It looks great. I know you have the, you want the carbon fiber bed for it. Don't hold off on the building self press Gen 1. Gen 2 will easily be swappable to Gen 2 with a few printed parts changed. I will not disclose them. Yeah, no worries. Don't, don't, uh, I don't want you to give away more than you want to. 650 euros for Army 3D Mark II kit. Once I've installed Clock Ender, I'm going to set up Camp. Camp is also fantastic. I highly recommend it. Okay, I appreciate. That was awesome. That <laughs> wasn't expecting, honestly, to get so many uh, so many comments. I know a lot of people are working or driving or it's late, but it sounds like a lot of people uh, hit up Jason from LDO for his. Is he working on the ERCF V2 kit? I didn't realize that. If he, I saw, I have the full kit though. Like I, I just need to find the the changes between V1 and V2, and I think Big Tree Tech is sending their can board, so I'll probably opt to just. I'll probably opt to just build it with the components I have. I don't want to waste them or, or just have them click dust more. Okay. Hey, thank you everybody for hanging out. Today was, it didn't go exactly how I had planned because I didn't realize we we're going to be tapping extrusions, but I will say that I didn't, I didn't give the chef kiss, but we both chef kiss. Uh, it turned out really nicely considering I hadn't really done much drilling and tapping previously. We had to do eight for this extrusion and it worked out really well. I also appreciate someone mentioned to me that there was wiring issues with this harness on some of the kits from Cyborg that could potentially be dangerous. So I will look into that between now and next week as I finish printing things. If, if I feel like there is more to it, I will certainly let everyone know and I will uh, absolutely relay any information that I end up discovering from it. But overall, things look great. We're making good progress on the printed parts. I am almost done with primary. Hopefully we'll be working on Accent in the next 24 to 48 hours. We'll print out the couple of recommended mods. 
will schedule next Wednesday's stream. And starting with the first stream of 2024, we will uh, begin assembling this next Wednesday. So I hope everybody has a fantastic rest of your days, your weeks, your New Year's. If you're going out and doing something, please be careful. New Year's has all sorts of craziness, uh, people driving around that shouldn't be driving. And um, yeah, just be careful. We're, it's going to be, I haven't done anything for New Year's in years. It's, it's our, it's technically our anniversary. Um, so I guess that's not true. We have done like meals at home, but like as far as celebrating of New Year's, I haven't done anything in years. And I imagine we'll probably hang out here and watch the countdown on TV and just chill. So we won't be doing a whole lot, but anyone that's doing anything, uh, please be careful. So, okay. Have a wonderful week. Have a happy new year. We're going into 2020 four and not 2014. <laughs> that was, <laughs> I'd like to say that that was me testing you guys. And I think it was my brain just not fully being here. So, all right. On that note, I'll talk to y'all later. Take care.